What is he talking about? You don't get a time out. Adam Curry, John C. Dvorak. It's Sunday, December 21st, 2014. Time for your Gitmo Nation Media Assassination, episode 680. This is No Agenda. Celebrating the solstice with a moon dance. Live from FEMA Region 6 in the capital of the Drone Star State, Austin, Tejas. In the morning, everybody, I'm Adam Curry. And from northern Silicon Valley, where I'm under attack by ants. John C. Dvorak. This is not the first time this has happened that I can recall on the show. Well, this has happened before. I may have. Sure, it happens all the time. I live in California. We're victims of the Argentinian ant. I remember having this uh, in Los Angeles. Remember, we we had our attack. Yeah, yeah. They'd circled the whole house, and then all of a sudden, uh, I guess is when the big rains came. Maybe. Oh yeah, they don't like being. They don't like being drowned. (laughs) No. And, and and then they were coming through the light sockets. Oh, yeah. They, you'd put something down on the ground, you know, like a, a cup, for two seconds, and then... It's they, astonishing how quick they, they, they find something. Now, is this not something that goes all the way from the northwest all the way down to Mexico? Isn't this like one big colony, this super colony, or is this something yeah, else? Yeah, it's an interesting group. They, they do not get it's to a, Washington it's State. It's an inter- yeah. interesting group, these, uh, these ants. Well, it's because it's, it's, one, it's the only ant, uh, variety of ant that... <laughs> that doesn't fight amongst themselves. So oh, they're really? part of one giant collective hive. What the, most oh. ants, if you know, one hive sees another, they're going to bolt war oh. and try to kill each other. But if like, for example, you wipe out a nest of these things and yeah. there's a bunch of stragglers yeah. and they go find another <clears throat> nest, yeah. they're welcomed. So these are like commie ants. Yes, they're communist ants. <laughs> no wonder they're all over California. And what are they called? They're Argentinian? That's what they're called? Yeah, they're Argentinian yeah. ants. All right, well. You can look them up. Yeah, fine. They're annoying. Very annoying. <laughs> yes. They, you... they, get, they, get it, they get it in their heads that they can do, you know, be somewhere or do something. They, it takes days to get rid of them. Okay. Why don't we just wrap this up? How do you get rid of them, John? You, uh, well, you vacuum them up as fast as you can. You block their entrance. You have to, I use ant block with poison. Yeah. That, uh, before I see them coming in. Of course, then they move and they start coming in someplace else. And you, you just keep doing that. Right. One of the things I've learned recently, which is kind of gruesome, but it works, is you get one of the, uh, this is good information for people on the coast or anyone who's confronted by these ants. You get a scripto lighter. A, script, kind of, a scripto lighter, yeah. One of those lighters, those little lighter I, guns that oh, use like barbecues. Oh, yeah. And find a bunch of these ants and you, you, you fry them. Well, you got to have the, the flame throwing scripto version. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, fr- yeah. you fry all as many ants as you can. All mm-hmm. Everyone you see moving, you fry them all and mm-hmm. leave them there. Yeah, so they, they send off a stench and a message. No, no. They, they, they get picked up. Oh. The, the dead ants, the Argentinian ants are interesting because they used to build most of their ant hills. They used their own dead compatriots. My it's goodness, kind of, John, what an education I'm receiving here. The Middle Ages used to do that with human <laughs> skulls and stuff. In fact, yeah. there's a church in Spain that's made out of skulls. I think we do that in uh, Corpus Christi still. That wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> anyway, so they take it. They, and when they get the ones back that have been burnt to a crisp, they send out the word, say, uh-oh, this isn't good. Oh. And then they just disappear. Oh. They go, you don't see them again for weeks. Wow. Anyway, well, this is this is uh, as long as they're not in the in the in the kitchen cabinets. Once that happens, then you're in deep shit. Well, that's the time to get the flame. The problem is you got to be careful you don't catch the house on fire. But you know, burning these ants because you yeah. like right now they're all <laughs> paperwork. I can't do it. <laughs> but we have Terminix take care of all this for us in L.A. Oh yeah, it's, yeah, but they don't keep the problem with, with the professionals. Is they don't, I don't think they really, for one thing, they're all high school drop. No offense. I know there's a couple of listen to the show. <laughs> oh, but a lot of them don't give a damn, and they yeah. just as soon kill you as Turn it off now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was fine, fine, fine. All right. So the, you're in a bad mood, clearly. Would you be in a bad mood? You had ants crawling all oh, over the I place. I have so many. I, yeah, I can be in a bad mood, but I'm not going to be. In fact, I'm in a bad mood for a different reason. May I? Okay, hit it. <clears throat> This past week, twice, and, this, and, the, and the week before that, I go on Facebook, which, as you know, I don't do regularly, but I do at least every 48 hours, I'll check in. And, and again, it's two people I know who are dead. And this is so depressing. Matthew Hennessy, who worked um, at my company in New York, Think New Ideas, and he had moved to uh, the Austin area, I don't know how long ago. And when I arrived here, 
And Matt's 41, 42, was. And he's like, hey, man, it's Adam. Good to have, good to have you here. I'm through, through Facebook. He said, yeah, we should have a drink. I'm like, yeah, definitely. Yeah, Matt was a good guy. So, you know, I figured we'll do that one day. And then in your timeline, it shows, oh, well, he's dead. What? Yeah. And, and, and well, I'll get to, let me so get how to. How old was he? 41. So, you know. Oh, that doesn't sound right. No. Then we have Celeste Rufo. Now, we already lost Warren, Cucur- Warren Cucurullo. There were two camera people at MTV, Warren and Celeste. And Warren died of, they probably both died of lung cancer because they were, sm- we were all smokers back in the, we'd be smoking in the studio before we do a segment on, <laughs> we just put this, put this cigarette down. Um, Warren died uh, two years ago and Celeste, who was Emmy award winning camera woman, went on after MTV to do a lot of incredible stuff. But you know, it's like when somebody who for seven or eight years, you've looked at them looking at you and you build up a very strange relationship, but it is a bond of some sorts. And then it's like, oh, well, Celeste is dead. 62. Now here's the thing that pisses me off. One, I open up Facebook. All I get is dead people. This is the fuck this. This is annoying. Two, you never find out what happened because that's what you want to say. Shoot, what happened? What happened? How did they die? But of course, everyone's too uh, polite and doing RIPs. I'll miss you. I want to know what happened. And then, of course, I sit down and go, should I just type in? Like, will somebody please tell me what happened? Did you do that? Did you type in and express this thought? Kind of. Kind of? So, wait a minute. So you're complaining about the politeness, and then you go polite. No, I went unpolite, actually. And I, actually, I even posted, I want to hold hands with everybody now and tell a secret. Well, and that then, would... Yeah, and then everyone thinks I'm a dick, of course. But I really want Why to... Why does everyone think you're a dick? Because you didn't do RIP. You're not respectful. <laughs> RIP, RIP, RIP. Uh, and, and, and I realize that, you know, I'm 50 now. Who knows how long it's... I, I hope I live to be like my grandparents, 98. That would be great. And I could be really... It tends to be genetic. Hunchbacked over, but I'll have all my hair and I'll be kind of... Just make sure you have a cane that you can lift up those skirts when yes, you get that yeah, age. That's a, that's a very, very, very good tip. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for this tip. John C. Devorah. You're sick. <laughs> the C stands for cane. And yeah, now we know. <laughs> It's becoming a good thing yeah. that C. That C is versatile. C, it's, it's, it's very, yes, it's very, it's it's very versatile. Okay. But I, here's, what I, here's what I realized. That's it. When I die, no matter when it is, there'll be R.I.P. You know, a slew of R.I.P. Oh, Dana Miller. Did I tell you Dana Miller died? Who's Dana, Dana Miller? Dana Miller was my radio syndicator. And Dana was, he, his boyfriend died, you know, 25 years ago of AIDS. And Dana became this huge AIDS activist, ran the Elton John uh, AIDS Foundation, uh, the uh, AIDS Project Los Angeles. And Dana, and he was also a, he was, but he was a, a manager, like Rick Springfield, Corey Hart, but also the, you know, Andy Gibb, like a real death around Dana all the time. Everybody who Dana touched died eventually, but he, huh. but he was a, a very a strong force. Dana, like sixty two, huh? Sixty two seems to be the yeah, and and and, and you know, no one, everyone around Dana dies. Dana doesn't die; these ants are dying. That's for sure. Ugh. And and so anyway, I realized that's what it's going to be. I'm going to die one day, and there'll be no ser- no one will care by the time I'm dead. No, it'll just I be will. A, just be a, <laughs> just be a thread <laughs> on Facebook. Oh, rip. R.I.P. R.I.P. Oh boy. Join Facebook just to say this. And then, R.I.P. Yeah, yeah, and then every, everybody you know, posts pictures of of the dead people. Well, remember this one? Yeah, remember this one? And then someone will come in and say, "I just want to say right now, I love all of you." <laughs> It's, it's but nobody surreal. wants to talk about the method or the no, uh, reason, no, rationale no, or the reason for the death, no, how he died, no, you know, of a whole no, slow, no, miserable death, tortured no, by terrorists. No, nothing. No, yeah. nothing. And uh, then no one's honest, of course. You know, no one's honest. It's, it, it, maybe it's like oh, yeah. a wake. I've seen, yeah, I know. There's been instances where somebody died and, and you say to yourself, Jesus, it was about time. That prick. <laughs> I mean, that's what you think. I mean, what can you say? I mean, that would seem to be a, something. If you were being honest, you, yeah. that, that has to happen with a number of people. Now, so so I'm now completely pissed off with this. I'm like, oh, let me just, uh, no more Facebook. Let me go to Twitter. And yeah. then I see, and, and, and now I've seen everything. 
I see a photo uh, with the, with the caption "Perfect rainy day breakfast, egg roasty style <laughs> potatoes and English bangers," posted by at the real Dvorak. You are now a food social network tweeter. Yeah, I've decided. This is this is ruining everything. Knowing that you this irked you to no extreme, you know what that means. Yeah, more of this. Well, I have like it's curious because JC started the idea. He he started taking pictures of all the dinners. This is, this is so, so wrong. I, Your food looks like crap. It's hard to make food look good. It, it, the bangers look undercooked. The egg is burnt on the edges. The roasty looks kind of good. You put ketchup on it to ruin the taste. No, no, no. Ketchup and potatoes, American way. Mm. Um, That's true. And the and the roasty's roasty, whatever it is. Yeah, the egg is 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 cooked hot, so I get a nice crispy little edge around it. And did you, did you well, actually? You, know, you would say whatever it is, you're going to bitch about it. So it doesn't yeah. mean anything. Um, <laughs> so so well, right, my I, opinion is useless. I totally he agree. Started taking pictures of all the dinners, and so I <laughs> took a few of my. Yeah. He says, "I said, what are you doing?" He says, "I'm taking pictures of the food." to post it's time for this kid to get his own apartment he says that he studied this Hmm. he says if you want to get more followers you want lots of pictures of food he's documented this oh that's interesting because i gotta get over the over the hill here i'm stuck at ninety nine thousand followers i need to go to like a hundred well you if you blocked if you unblocked a couple people maybe your account would go up (laughs) i I doubt it i think i think that does that dock from your account if you yeah it does yeah, once you block me, you could actually block. You could be at two hundred thousand if you unblock everybody. Down. Yeah. Oh, right. So anyway, hmm. so I've decided I'm going to follow suit and start posting pictures of food with maybe some food tips. Sad, very sad. Well, the food tips will be good. All right. Um, the good news is I found uh, I found out that uh, at Universal Studios they have uh, now Universal Studios the tour for if you've never been on it there's it, it it's changed a lot over the years. And you can get out, and you you don't have to sit in the stupid bus the whole time. You may, and probably you don't have to sit in it at all if you don't want to. Uh, but you know, Megatron, Megatron is he a, is he a transformer? You're talking about Universal Studios in Los Angeles. Yes, yes, I am. Because the one in yes. Florida and Orlando is just like is my, you might as well be at Disneyland. Okay. Uh, Megatron, Megatron is is Megatron not is he a, a transformer or is he one of the yes uh, yes he's a transformer? Yeah. So they have a dude in a Megatron suit. And um, and he is um, he is on a crusade against selfies, and <laughs> this, this and it, it's consistent. So here's this girl. She she runs up in front of Megatron and you know, selfie and listen to what he then does. You got to see the video. Actually, it's even cooler because the guy you know is in the suit like freaking out behind her. Selfie. You will not receive a selfie so long as you stand before me with your ridiculous furred hoodie. When will you learn that your status updates mean zero to nothing to anyone ever? It doesn't matter which social network you post it on. Worthless. Use your mind. Create new memories. Interact. Don't just add it to a library of forgotten photographs. Okay. Ugh, how disappointing your generation is. Bye. Bye. I. It is good. How disappointing your generation is. Yeah, exactly. That little uh, sub clip is what you should say for an evergreen. How disappointing your generation. Yeah, I tried is. to isolate it, but doesn't doesn't really doesn't really uh, work doesn't very well. Right. No, no. Uh. But I like that, and you know, there's always a, a backup gig for me, I guess. Yeah, no, I think the so. Megatron yeah, exactly. man. Exactly, you could probably <laughs> do that same rant. Be the Megatron man. Well, you have your own version of it. Marika. <laughs> Marika. <laughs> Marika. <laughs> Marika. <laughs> Intended to say Marika, but yeah. Marika. No, I meant Marika. Marika. I know you meant Marika. Hey, John, do you know that we are from the future, you and I? Well, me more than you, but sometimes, you know, I bring you along on my future travels. Oh, yeah, and what happened? What's the latest from the future? <laughs> well, I want to take us back to episode 677 of the best podcast in the universe. That was, uh, so, what, so what's that now? Two weeks ago? 
Was it? <clears throat> seven, the, seven. What number are we on? We're at 80. So that's three, uh, yeah, almost two weeks ago. Okay. And here is what uh, we talk, We were talking about, um, oh, we were talking about Uncle Don and how he agreed that uh, uh, that South Korea, uh, that we're, we are performing a sales job on South Korea since they are now going to be uh, responsible for their own uh, defense, right. their own OPSEC. And we were kind of laughing about how how the, you know we create all these reasons for for countries and I guess companies to be uh, worrisome, and it's a sales job. Everything we do is a sales job to sell more uh, weapons, right? Exactly, that's what we do to address. I mean, the, the president is the, is essentially if somebody would, somebody pointed. I pointed. I was back and forth in an email with somebody, and. Um, they came. They just said, "Well, I don't understand why the uh, why the oh, I know the, the I know China, that voice. I know this guy. The, the China, was it the Chinese? So who who bought all these Russian reactors? India. India. Oh, why didn't General Electric make uh, reactors? Uh, how come uh, they didn't sell these reactors? Why does Russia get this twenty four reactor contract? Or cheap, whatever cheap, was. cheap ruble, I'd say. And I well, the, besides, I think that was pre cheap ruble. Oh, uh, now it's just a better uh, deal. But yeah. they'll do the deal in dollars anyway. Ironically. Yeah. And I said, well, because the, this are, these deals, these sort of deals are done by this chief sales guy who is either Obama or Putin. Putin, and Putin was, was there, you know, doing the deal to get yeah. you know this contract signed because mm-hmm. that's what they do. Yes. The, the, the president of the United States is the CEO of the military industrial complex. Yes, literally. It's his job to close these they, deals in one yeah. way or another. They call him the chief executive. Yeah, he's the chief executive. Yeah. All right. So here we were talking about this in in relation to South Korea, and this is before you know, the big Sony news. This is just us talking about you know, South Korea, and of course, the um, keep, keeping North Korea dangerous is part of the sales job to address the threats from the Korean Peninsula. This kind of tells you that at least for the next period of, that is now fi- being financed, I presume the bill is going to pass, um, we will see uh, North Korea being very, very dangerous. And us helping our uh, and uh, ourselves and our allies. Can you mention pay- something? Stop. Hmm? You're playing a clip. Yes, I am playing a clip. Yes. Yeah. Well, you have to say. Something I said because- but we're playing a clip. Yeah, you said that, but then you never. The transition was vague, and so uh-huh. it sounded like you were just still talking. <laughs> That's how good the quality of these audio is on our show. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. So I'm listening to you saying this is funny. He said this exact same thing. What's he leading up to? Why is he doing this again? I'm actually I'm actually leading up to you having the punchline. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now start. Do you now start the clip now. The whole. Okay. Over again, and I'll do. Wait. I'll. And I'll, I'll separate it <laughs> to address the threats from the Korean Peninsula. This kind of tells you that at least for the next period of, that is now fi- being financed. I presume the bill is going to pass. Um, we will see uh, North Korea being very, very dangerous. And us helping our uh, and uh, ourselves and our allies, uh, Japan and uh, the Republic of Korea, uh, with uh, some sales. That's, that's what it's you know, you all have to about. I kind of feel sorry for the North Koreans because they're a, they're a punching bag. They're yeah. they're being vilified as a sales mechanism. <laughs> they, they yeah. Well, isn't that, isn't that what the whole axis of evil was to start with? Well, it looks like it in hindsight. There you go. We called it. Yeah, of course. Oh, I'd forgotten about it. Oh, huh. <laughs> completely forgotten about it. Well, I haven't forgotten about the other angle that we're seeing here, which is. Well, the- your angle is right on the money, John. Like completely right on the money. The angle of getting everybody to sign on to the cyber sharing bill. And the president signed uh, five bills in the middle of the night. Uh, the ones we discussed, uh, all about the uh, the sharing, but even better than that, he just came out and said it. Did you see this whole year ender thing that he did? I have the two clips. Okay, I have I have a couple clips too, so I'll take yours. Okay, well, and- let me do my two. These yeah. are sh- I try to cut them down as much as I can. Then I yeah. have a couple other clips that are kind of interesting uh, side clips. Yeah, but uh, well, here's the clip of. <laughs> I want to play this clip first and make a comment on it. Mm. This is the Obama. We do not need two-bit dictators telling us what to do. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So, uh, you know, that's not who we are. That's not what America is about. Um, again, I, I'm sympathetic that Sony, as a private company, was worried about liabilities and this and that and the other. I wish uh, they'd spoken to me first. Uh, I, I would have told them, do not I'll get into uh, a pattern in which you're intimidated by these kinds of criminal attacks. Um, imagine if, instead of it being a cyber threat, somebody had broken into their offices and destroyed uh, a bunch of uh, computers and stolen disks and... Did you now, and this clip he rolls off the goes off the rail with this clip. Yes. Did you also see Sony's CEO Michael Linton's response? No, I didn't. I have this. It's a little longer than what you just did, but it, the whole thing is great and there's something very fascinating at okay. the very beginning of this. The president says Sony made a mistake. In- uh, and by the way, Sony rebutted earlier in in print that they had contacted the, uh, I think they said the CIA, which is interesting, since the FBI came out with the analysis uh, and the weak forensics. Uh, but they said, you know, we, we were in touch with the authorities from day one, so that's not true that they didn't contact anybody. Pulling the film. Did you make a mistake? No. I, I think, actually, the unfortunate part is, in this instance, the president, the press, and the public are mistaken as to what actually happened. We do not own movie theaters. We cannot determine whether or not a movie will be played in movie theaters. So, to sort of rehearse for a moment the sequence of events. Now, this was very interesting when I heard him say this. This is how um, media training and PR can go awry, and, and I didn't notice it until I heard the clip. I was watching the video first. Instead of saying to review the timeline, he says, let's rehearse the timeline. Yeah, I heard that too. Which That's to interesting. Me, which to me means that he was rehearsed and someone said, okay, let's rehearse the timeline again. Well, oh, okay. Don't you think? I'd like to believe that's... That's what he's, but he's in the business of using words wrong, you know, and <laughs> okay, that's his business. It's quite well, possible uh, that he just doesn't mm, know the right word. Yeah. Movie theaters. We cannot determine whether or not a movie will be played in movie theaters. So to sort of rehearse for a moment the sequence of events, <laughs> we experienced the worst cyber attack in American history. Okay. I don't know about that. That's yeah, dubious. Shelley Adelson might have a different view of that as his casino, but they stole millions of dollars and shut down his operations. And we don't know how many banks are wrong. Who knows? This is totally... But it's rehearsed. And persevered for three and a half weeks under Pers- enormous stress. And, and by the way, I have people on the inside and I have a couple of emails to share. The network is still down inside Sony. People's uh, mach- uh, desktop machines are still have the, the 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 desktop GOP image, which of course is you know, easy to deploy if you're in an IT environment. An enormous difficulty, um, and all with the effort of trying to keep our business up and running and get this movie out into the public. Oh yes. When it came to the crucial moment, when a threat came out from what was called the GOP at the time threatening audiences who would go to the movie theaters. The movie theaters came to us one by one over the course of a very short period of time. We were completely surprised by it and announced that they would not carry the movie. At that point in time, we had no alternative but to not proceed with a theatrical release on the 25th of December. So and that's all we did. So that's you have not caved in your view? We have not caved. We have not given in. We have persevered and we have not backed down. We have, we have always had every desire to have the American public see this movie. <laughs> you are well known as a, somebody who supported President Obama. Were yes. You, were you yes. disappointed in what you heard today? <laughs> um, I would be fibbing to say I wasn't disappointed. Fibbing. Um, I, fibbing. I, fibbing. You know, the president and I haven't spoken. I don't know exactly whether he understands the sequence of events that led up to the movies not being shown in the movie theaters. Um, 
and um, therefore I would disagree with the notion that it was a mistake. It's a generally held view by the public and the press that that's what happened, and maybe that's how that view was was held by by him. But knowing as I do the the facts and how they and how they've un, unfolded, um, you know, we st stood extremely firm in terms of making certain that this movie would appear in movie theaters. Yes, it was a very imp important piece of work. And I, will, and I will say that, you know, the Christmas Day release is, you do focus a lot of energy on that. Well, a lot the, of money, a lot of it, promotion. It, Eric the Shill, who is a big movie buff. Oh. He just, I don't have these in front of me, but he went off the top of his head with about 10 blockbusters mm -hmm. that are all coming out around the same time. And it'd be crazy to bring this movie out because it's going to fail. Well, I, I, I don't know why. I mean, this is, the movie itself, as we know, is, is not important. No, that, it's not it just, important. It it's was, made, in, was important. made important all of a sudden. Just made. Now, the cybersecurity bills are signed. Did you get the president talking about uh, actually, you know. Not this, about the signing, but let me play the rest of these, a couple right, more of these clips. Right, right. I, this is the we do not push up, uh, put up with the, uh, this is the we do not part two. But that's that's play that. Oh, actually, I, you know, I I played part two first. I'm sorry, you didn't. Oh, even no notice wonder it. it didn't make sense. Yeah, it's my mistake. I want to play part one now. Then no, I'll skip part I'm one. Sorry, I didn't Here, see. Play that. the confirming goal of government. This is where I, my thesis that this is all about getting these companies scared, so they have to join oh, yeah. force with, oh, with yeah. our genius government <laughs> who can't even run a uh, public health website, <laughs> but they want they're going to help you. When I came into office, I stood up a cybersecurity yeah, exactly. uh, interagency team it up. to look at everything that we could do at the government level to prevent these kinds of attacks. We've been coordinating with the private sector. There you go. A lot more needs to be done. We're not even close to where we need to be. And you know, one of the things in the new year that I hope Congress is prepared to work with us on is strong cyber security laws that allow for information sharing across uh, private sector platforms as well as the public sector so that we are incorporating best practices and preventing these attacks from uh, happening in the first place. Yeah. These are all now passed. The, pre the president signed five of them. We read at least two of them to you. The cybersecurity sharing uh, uh, bill is uh, is in, is in. I, I'm but I, I'm very worried, John. I need to. Can we, can I take you on another sidetrack well, for a before moment? Before you do that, I just want to make some a back comment, which is the Sony guy is very disappointed in all the rest of it. But he obviously is be, he he doesn't get what's going on. No, he doesn't. Of course not. What's going on has got nothing to do with Sony or anybody else. Is to get these damn companies to join, you know, to do a deal with the government mm -hmm. intelligence agencies to share data. And this is going to be it. And this is, of course, a, a, a continuation of a fascist state because and, you have and, corporation and government working together. And it's also part of the sales job. Right. Yeah. No, it's a double hit. Now, let it's me, a win win. Well, it get, it, now here's where it gets a little frightening. I'm uh, perusing around, and uh, there's the Texas Tribune um, uh, newspaper, and they have they do I don't know regular interviews. Uh, the I guess the 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 editor in chief, and they bring on a freshman congressman who will be who was just now voted in, and who will be uh, a Republican uh, in the House uh, starting I guess January, whenever they start the new session. His name is Will Hurd, H U R D. And Will Hurd is, is almost, I think it's unprecedented. He is going to be chairing, not a committee, probably a subcommittee um, of the Intelligence Committee. Um, he will be on the Department of Homeland Security Committee. This is not very typical, or let's just say it's atypical for a freshman congressman to come in. Now, this guy, um, I think, is, is very dangerous. We have to keep our eye on guys like this. And he's, he looks like he's seven feet tall, black guy from Texas, wearing boots. You know, he's, he's got he's got a very dynamic look. He's got a very big presence about him. Um, he claims that he is well. He's an expert in everything, and this is what really bothered me about the guy. He was always saying like, "Oh yeah, well you know this is." Uh, in fact, let me let me play this out of order. I'll tell you why I didn't trust him right off the bat. He's asked about uh, President Obama's actions on Cuba. 
And here's what he says. Now, you know, people are talking about, you know, the embargoes will get lifted. Well, that's going to take an act of Congress. You know, the Libertad Act of, of 86 kind of codified our embargo with them. So, hey, I look forward to being in, in, in that conversation and having a conversation. Because that's my background. That's my, my expertise. Right. So that's his background. That's his expertise. But then later he's going to talk about his background, his expertise, his computers and cybersecurity. The problem here is... The Libertad Act was 1996, not 1986. So right off the bat, I'm like, this guy... I, mean, I thought you said 76. He said 86. It's 96. And so right away, I'm like, eh, this guy, this, I don't like this guy. And, uh, and now let's, this is the kind of person, because of course we know almost nobody knows computers. They don't run computers. They don't have iPads. They don't know anything in Congress. We've, we've seen this time and time again. Janet Napolitano. Ran a Department of Homeland Security. She claimed she could not use a computer or didn't. Right. A lot of yeah, these people don't. Said. A lot of these people don't, can't, won't, don't understand it. Now they bring in this one guy, and of course, in the land of the blind, one eye is king. And this, you can hear how he speaks. He's a Silicon Valley douchebag from He's Texas. A CIA guy. And yeah, but now listen to how he trumps his CIA credits. You know, this this is something I have a little bit of experience. Well, on. you're a cybersecurity yeah, guy, absolutely. so you understand. Yeah. yeah, I'm a cybersecurity guy. That's right. Yeah, my 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 degree was in computer science. Right. It's in, all right. You know, when I, right. And it says right all the time. I was in the CIA. I was undercover officer, and, and my job was collecting intelligence on threats in the homeland. Um, but I also did some offensive cyber operations. Oh, he did some offensive cyber. Operations. This this guy sounds like he's full of shit. Yeah, he's a phony as well. Penetrating the networks of, of folks that were hostile to us. Folks. And then yeah. you know when I got out of the agency and and, and been in business the last five years, um, I helped start a. Can he even talk about that if he was CIA? Can he even say, yeah, we penetrated some networks of folks that we? Can he even talk about these things like that? Seems uh, very unlikely. I don't think so us. And then, you know, when I got out of the agency and, and, and been in business the last five years, um, I helped start a cybersecurity company. So- oh, really? Oh, he helped start a cybersecurity company. So he's now going to come in because he knows everything about cybersecurity, or at least how to outsource it. We basically break into banks, steal their money, show them how we did it, right? <laughs> well, yeah, oh, yeah. We break into banks, steal their money, show you that. I hate this guy! To protect our digital infrastructure. <laughs> he's um, the, such an the, obvious phony. Yeah, but this, listen to how he's going to be running the show. Threat. But this is not the first dumb fuck that's been running the show that Obama brought in. If we remember uh, old Skip Logic, whatever his name was, it was Vivek, our CTO. Vivek Kundra. Right. Kundra. Well, you know, we also have uh, Meg, uh, Megan Smith is now the CTO. Yeah. 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 Megan Smith, and she's writing me letters. Hold on. Let's finish this guy. You got to hear this. Our, our digital infrastructure is coming from all places. And one of the things that I think the federal government does a poor job of is we is go recognizing in. recognizing bullshit artists. <laughs> and the federal government goes in and asks business, tell me more about this threat. You know, we need to learn more. How are they doing this? Give us the details. And getting down into ones and zeros, right? But the federal government rarely goes back and helps a business and gives a business information oh. on the threat that they may know in order to help that business protect themselves. And I think this is probably one of the examples. And, and I'm excited because I'm going to be in a position to do something about this in this next Congress. Um, I'm going to be on the Oversight and Government Reform Committee. Um, this is a committee that um, investigated Benghazi, or the, the investigation of Benghazi got started. Right. This is where Fast and the Furious was investigated. And I'm going to be the chairman of a subcommittee on information security and information technology. Right. And so I'm well, the only fresh... for a laugh. You know, well, yeah. Um, that's a, a has a chair of a subcommittee, and to be able to use my background experience on this issue and talk about information um, sharing, talk about the threats to some of these other groups, and how that we can work to protect our critical infrastructure. It's frightening to all. How we can do this to protect our, our nation and ultimately consumer right. and client information. But oh. you're also on the Homeland Security Committee as of last week. Absolutely. Chairman McCall has, has arranged Absolutely. for you and uh, another freshman uh, right? Republican from Texas, uh, John Radcliffe. Absolutely. Of the, of the Homeland Security Committee. From a Homeland Security perspective, is it a good idea to come back to the original question, though, for us to be essentially capitulating to the threats and demands of the people Listen to who were at odds? No, look, you, you, don't, you don't negotiate with, with bad guys. You don't negotiate with terrorists. And, and to me, in this case, you know, we should... We, you know, the, the North Koreans, in my opinion, when it comes to um, their technical sophistication, you know, they're in kind of the t- tier two. And, and look, we shouldn't capitulate to these guys. Yeah. We, you know, it's, we need to roll up, the, we need to, you know, roll up, make a fist um, yeah. sometime. Make a fist. These people scare me, John. These are the people who are going in. He's a bullcrap artist, you're right. That's what he is. 
ran a cybersecurity after doing offensive cyber attacks in CIA, which I can't talk about. Stealing from the banks and showing them how we did it. Yeah, it's charging it, him for it. That's a sub clip. <laughs> Stealing from the banks and <laughs> showing them how we did it. That's what I, that's that's my next uh, my next uh, career. Stealing, Stealing from, from the, the banks, banks show them how, how we did, did it. it. <laughs> uh, Stealing from the banks, show them how we did it. Jake, I'm not a doctor and neither are you. Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a diplomat. There you go. Uh, email? Quick emails? Yeah. Insider what? emails? Dude named Ben? Okay. Uh, okay, let me just, uh, uh, these have been redacted, obviously, because these are people who are inside or close or whatever. Uh, so this job, not as easy as flicking on a switch. I'm sure you know the FBI and Sony, to the best of their knowledge, believe it to be North Korea. But read Enemies, and I would say the, the book Enemies. The book describes about as competent as I think the FBI are. Okay, I think it's North Korea. This is our, our insider. But I think it's also an inside job. I believe there to be a number of groups involved. He says D.N. Ben, hacktivists, North Korea, uh, the cash symbol, uh, the true culprits will never be found. This is no simple job. Now, here comes the interesting part. Ever since Bain Capital came in and started going after middle management, this does not surprise me. I even saw Bain, this is uh, Mitt Romney's uh, company. I even saw Bain take a long, uh, take a long time executive director's office and kicked him out just because the Bain dude liked the view. <laughs> Is it customary that Bain stays inside the company whose people it is trying to fire? I would say yes, that is very customary. This is what these guys do. So Bain were really the people who came in and started to clean house. And then from a uh, visual effects insider, I've been working in the visual effects industry for over 15 years. I've been part of huge visual effects-centric films. James Bond, Harry Potter films, Disney, Marvel, you name it on. I have plenty of friends at Sony. Uh, here are the points I reckon are worth noting about Sony and why I do agree this should have this probably started as an inside job and s- spun out of control in the media manipulation machine. Sony, Sony Picture Image Works is what uh, the digital division. This is what we were talking about: the disgruntled employees. Due to tax credits offered by Canada, they were relocating work to Vancouver. Uh, there's tax credits uh, there for the studio, so uh, you know, uh, not the companies doing the work. Lots of people lost their jobs and or were asked to move to Vancouver. Think about a thousand people that have worked and invested in a place for years with families and everything. Uh, Sony Pictures Image Works used to be at the forefront of this industry, winning Oscars, making kick-ass technology and movies. The last years have been horrible. Morale was low. Movies are bad. From Smurfs to uh, Hotel Transylvania, people were losing their jobs and those who moved were working for crap movies. On top of that, uh, the top technology officers quit, adding fire to everything. Now, all of this is something I've lived through the eyes of my colleagues. Very possible this started in that division because of just the, the people just completely bummed out. And the, the visual effects industry has al- always been under pressure. Oh, yeah. They had no it, union it, and there's all kinds of crap. Going no, on the on fact that. I was a special on one of these, uh, one of the, I think it was on PBS actually, and they were talking about these. These guys, they're like vagabonds. They start one company, like visual, you know, the industrial lights and magic, and then they have spinoffs, and then right. they destroy all their models and go to digital, and mm-hmm. they do, and it's expensive to start up because yeah. of the computer power you need to do the what, modern stuff. It's not just a couple and, of iPhones, and it's and you never get paid enough. You always get ripped off yeah. by the studios, yeah. they, you know, because it's very expensive to do some of these things. It looks, you know, it's not using the computer doesn't make the film cheaper, right? If you do it right, oh, no, where it no, looks, no, you know, no. the real deal. And, and yeah, I know it's a nightmare. Apparently. And, I, and I believe they have, no, they have no union. I think that's the main thing. Well, it's because they're all independents. Yeah. If you look in the, yeah. on the credit roll, it's always these little yeah. companies that they use to do this and that. Yeah. And, you know, they're not going to unionize. They can't afford it. Let's look at uh, they have two fabulous quotes from the media. Now, as you know, one of my pet peeves is how the press reports on matters of technology. Because they think technology is tech, which means phones. And there's very little information really about what is going on. Here is first Rich Lowry. He's from the National Review. Uh, Listen to how he perceives what happened inside Sony. What do you make of it? What do you make of uh, what Obama said about it? Uh, Where do we all take all this? 
Oh, the whole. Uh, this, by the way, is on uh, uh, PBS. Issue is ex- astonishing and just extremely disturbing. It's like Adolf Hitler being able to reach into this country in the 19. 19- um, 30s and stop Charlie Chaplin from making fun of him. I mean, this is a Seth Rogen and James Franco movie. It's a threat to no one. And you know, they didn't just reach in and steal these emails, which were disseminated all over the place. I mean, they really tried to prevent the functioning of the company by melting its hard drives and all the rest <laughs> of it. <laughs> okay. Hello. Hello, but I doubt they melted the hard drives. <laughs> I don't think they melted the hard drives. So I, I really, it's it's a, a very bad precedent. I think they should have released the f- movie in one form or another. Even, Everybody's saying this. Even if they couldn't have gotten it in theaters, given the terror threat, they should have released it online. And it's ultimately a national security issue because oh, it's, it's really? agents of a foreign power reaching into this country and punishing a... Um, movie, movie studio for exercising its free speech rights in a way that foreign power doesn't like. Yeah, you know, there was a clip. I don't know if I have that uh, on this. Well, yeah, I do. I want to play this because I, I got a comment on this. Uh, let's see what Andrea Mitchell Brooks. This is you know Brooks and Shields a little too too some that commentate on uh, PBS NewsHour. Uh, uh, did they sing uh, uh, Summer Wine, Summer what? Breeze? Oh, I thought Summer. it was a group. Oh. Good. That's Brooks and Dunn. <laughs> anyway, Brooks and, Brooks and Shields, they come out and they, they we've they closed the book on themselves when they both came out in favor, you know, with the uh, with the CIA. Uh, whose side are you yeah, on? Yes, so we played that on the last show. Yeah, on the sold last out, show. so we know that they're stooges. Yeah, all in. So here's another example. They said, we guess they're all in now. So this is Brooks and his comments. And this is Brooks proves he's a stooge. Cyber attack on Sony Pictures. First of all, the president said flat out today that Sony made a mistake. What do you think? Yeah, I guess I think so. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's you know, uh, like the president said, we can't have a country where people are you know. self-censoring. Uh, and self-censoring. And some foreign attack, if this was a... Well, the president even said self-censoring. Yes, yeah, self-censoring. Yeah. Yeah. They'd done a movie about a civil rights figure, and a bunch of racists said, we're going to do something to your company if you, unless you pull this movie. And they pulled the movie, it would have been clear. It would have been a disgraceful thing to do. And so I think this is somewhat similar. I do have some sympathy for th- Sony. They're out there all alone. Oh. <laughs> with spending apparently hundreds of million dollars to target them. This Wait, is back it up. Oh, what? Back it up. How many millions? A billion dollars? You got to hear this. This is funny. Hold on. The action problem. The companies have to stick together. The government has to say an attack on. Wait, was it back further? Back further. Yeah, oh, sorry. You went. Sorry. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. When they pulled the movie, it would have been clear. It would have been a disgraceful thing to do. And so I think this is somewhat similar. I do have some sympathy for th- Sony. They're out there all alone against a country with spending apparently hundreds of million dollars to target them. <laughs> what? <laughs> apparently. Well, it's just, apparently it could, it, they spent the, the, the <laughs> North Korea, which is broke, by the way. <laughs> They're spending hundreds of millions of dollars. Bitcoins. To tar- Bitcoins, John. Bitcoin. It's got to be Bitcoin. He should have thrown that in. They're spending hundreds of millions of dollars in Bitcoin. Yeah, I heard you. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the self-censoring thing. Should we play uh, the president's comment real quick? I have that here about a self yeah, play, play self-cen- self I have the self-censorship here thing here. One of the things in the new year that I hope Congress is prepared to work with us on is strong cyber security laws that allow for information sharing across uh, private sector platforms as well as the public sector Ooh. so that we are incorporating best practices and preventing these attacks from uh, happening in the first place. Um, but even as we get better, you know, the hackers are going to get better too. Some of them are going to be state actors. Some of them are going to be non-state actors. Some of them will be from Microsoft. Um, all of them are going to be sophisticated oh. and many of them can do some no. damage. <laughs> We cannot have a society uh-huh. in which some dictator someplace can start imposing censorship here in the United States. Mm. Because if somebody is able to intimidate folks out of releasing a satirical movie, imagine what they start doing when they see a documentary that they don't like mm. or news reports that they don't like. Mm. Um, or even worse, imagine if 
producers and Get distributors to and others start engaging in self-censorship. Uh, okay. <gasps> Took a long time. All uh, right. So let's talk about that was actually my that clip that you didn't play. Oh, I'm so Same sorry. Clip. Oh, okay. uh, self-censorship. Uh, let's think about this. First of all, let's. does anyone remember the movie, the 1976 film, The Prophet? The Messenger, it had different titles. The Prophet, The Messenger, or Muhammad. That movie, they were, it was, a, it was, was, was we almost said it. Yeah. That movie was brought out amidst a bunch of fatwas that said, you can't bring this movie out because you cannot depict Muhammad. And they, they cowed the theaters to drop the movie. It was never released. And it was a big controversy at the time. It was a big deal. And, and so ever since then, the self-censorship took place, and they've never done a movie anything like this again. And that was in 1976. And if we think about more recently when somebody didn't self-censor, like Juan Williams, who got fired from PBS for saying that he'd be, uh, he would be, always think twice when he sees a bunch of Muslims coming on an airplane, and they fired him, uh, Vivian Schiller's yes, crowd, yes, fired yes. him for this, just Horrible. suggesting— oh. Just suggesting that he has feelings about this. Uh-huh. So, and self censorship. I brought this up. I had a meeting with an ex uh, New York Times editor who was working on a book, and we're talking about the, the early days of uh, tech reporting and how things have changed. And uh, many of the opinions I expressed are the ones that we talk about on the show. But one of the things I did say, I brought up to him. I said, "Well, you know, it, uh, if you're a writer, you do a lot of self censoring. That's just what you do." If you're working for Time Warner, you're not thinking of doing an expose on the creepy. When, when I was just to, to interject, when I was working at MTV, when I got into MTV before, before I was even on the air, I did an interview with TV Guide, and there were you know which was big back in the day. It mattered, and uh, the question was you know what did you think of Madonna uh, when you interviewed her? So I, I didn't like her too much. They lost their shit over that. Don't you ever ever say anything like that about Madonna. And then from then on, I'm like, guess what? I didn't say anything bad about Madonna. <laughs> of course not. No, why? And this is the way the media works. Yeah. But meanwhile, I thought it was interesting. There was a, dis- a disparity in, in belief systems because I know a number of New York Times reporters, and I've discussed this. In fact, I discussed it with one of them after I had this meeting. Mm-hmm. And I said, you self-censor. Said, Hell yeah. Of course. So, so I'm talking now, this is an editor of the New York Times. Mm-hmm. And I say, I tell him this about the self-censoring. He says, well, I hope to God no writers do that on my watch. <laughs> and then he says, I don't think anyone at the New York Times practices such a thing. Wow. Well, and he's dead serious. <laughs> so the editors, even though they'll do what they, they did it. to you, which yeah. is come up to you and say, you better, better not, not do that. Yeah. They are in a dream world. In fact, it's always said as they up at the office, they, the suits, those people don't the really. The suits. The suits. Yeah. Um, I have a John Barrow, Josh Barrow, New York Times reporter. Uh, and I believe that these New York Times reporters are so freaked out about this. So the censorship issue, probably. This is why they're coming. They keep saying, oh, we have to get this movie out. We have to get this movie out because they feel that. Maybe it's their chance now. Some, you know what I mean, John? There's something weird about it. everyone saying, we got to get the movie out. They should put the movie out, man, because we can't have them censoring us. Freedom of speech. Oh, you think it's overcompensating? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because they're censoring themselves are, constantly. Are you ready for what Josh Barrow, who, what, what does he write? He's in the New York Times, right? Josh Barrow. Let me take a look. Who is oh, this guy? Josh Barrow. This is uh, Josh. Let's look him up. B-A-R-R-O, I think it is. Josh Barrow. Uh, Josh. Opinion journalist. Oh, he's a columnist. Uh, says he's a neoliberal and Republican. Whatever. Domestic- neoliberal? <laughs> a neoliberal Republican? I'm, I'm, is the worst person in the world. I'm looking at Wikipedia. He he's currently he a neoliberal. Yeah, he's a domestic Don't course. The right minds calls themselves a neoliberal. It's considered one of the worst people. You, it's the worst. Long story. I'm not going to go into it, but it's like it's, it's something not to be proud of. In other words, he's a Clinton Republican. Here we go. Listen to what his idea is, how we should... I mean, of all the things you could do, John, how, how can you force Sony's hand to releasing this movie online? What would you... In your wildest dreams, what would a, what would a, a way to do this be? You're I not going to steal the movie and release it. 
I think the hack teaches us an important lesson, which is the risk that corporate America is a soft underbelly for attacks from outside. And I think, you know, you had the president basically calling out Sony for being cowardly, saying as it was a mistake to pull the film. He wishes he'd, they'd called him before doing that. But the thing is, it's not Sony's job to project American strength to the North Koreans, and it's not Sony's job to discourage further attacks that are likely to come on companies other than Sony by showing that attacks won't be successful. That is the job of the government. Um, but one unconventional thing I actually think the government should do is I think they should seize the interview by eminent domain and release it. <laughs> um, it's an, a, a non-traditional use of eminent domain, but you can use eminent domain on intangible property. It would be for a bona fide public use, which is to demonstrate that if you <laughs> perpetuate an attack for the purpose of preventing a release of a movie, you will fail. It's clear. It seems to me that probably the last thing Kim Jong-un wants is for people to see this movie so the government could take it and air it on PBS and put it on government <laughs> websites, show it in post offices. What a maniac. Um, but basically, I think it is show it in you post need some offices. sort of response from the government that shows <laughs> that this attack will not achieve its objectives. We can't rely on Sony to do that. And then we have to think also more broadly, if other attacks like this happen, probably for a less frivolous purpose than this, what are we doing to ensure that there is a response that, that responds to these proportionally and discourages those attacks? Because we can't rely on the companies themselves to undertake responses when they are attacked in a way that is important to them. Eminent country. domain, John. That's the way to go. Eminent well, domain. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> yes, yeah, steal, steal, steal the movie. movie and then release it, which would be... Which, uh, is, but, that is eminent I, I do want to... Uh, just briefly, the FBI... Um, did you read their their full on statement about? I did not read the full on statement. I know you would. Yeah, uh, and it's it's very very disturbing. To, and it's really just one pager. I, I'd just like to go through this for a second. Um, today, the FBI would like to uh, provide an update on the status of our investigation to the cyber attack um, in late November by the group calling itself Guardians of Peace. The FBI has determined that the intrusion into Sony uh, SPE is that what they're calling it? Uh, Sony Pictures Entertainment. Network consisted of deployment of destructive malware and the theft of proprietary information, as well as employees' personally identifiable information, etc., etc. After discovering the intrusion, SPE requested the FBI's assistance, although they say it was CIA. Since then, FBI has been working closely with the company throughout the investigation. Sony has been a great partner in the investigation. Hello, pay attention, everybody. And continues to work closely with the FBI. Sony reported the incident within hours, which is what the FBI hopes all companies will do when facing a cyber attack. Sony's quick reporting facilitated the investigators' ability to do their jobs and ultimately to identify the source of these attacks. So message here, and from Fortune 500 companies, I'm hearing dudes named Ben everywhere saying the executives are all in on sharing with the FBI anything and everything. As a result of our investigation and in close collaboration with other U.S. government departments and agencies, who are unnamed, the FBI now has enough information to conclude that the North Korean government is responsible for these actions. While the need to protect sensitive sources and methods precludes us from sharing all of this information, our conclusion is based Why? in part... The need to... Well, don't... What are you asking questions for, citizen? While the need to protect sensitive sources and methods precludes us from sharing all of this information, our conclusion is based in part on the following. Three points. One, technical analysis of the data deletion malware used in this attack revealed links to other malware the FBI knows North Korean actors previously developed. For example, there were similarities in specific lines of code, encryption algorithms, data deletion methods, and compromised networks, which you can buy. You can buy this. All right, that's so that's not real. That's yeah, shaky. That's all the, there's stuff you can just buy. Yeah, yeah. Two. Borderline script kitty stuff. The FBI also observed significant overlap between the infrastructure used in this attack and other malicious cyber activity the U.S. government has previously linked directly to North Korea. Ah, the Internet. For, yeah. For example, the FBI discovered that several Internet protocol IP addresses associated with no North Korean infrastructure communicated with IP addresses that were hard-coded into the data deletion malware un used in this attack. All completely debunkable. You can show how you, uh, you could use this. This is no proof. Third, separately, the tools used in the SPE attack have similarities to a cyber attack in March of last year against South Korean banks and media outlets, which was carried out by North Korea. Which I think was not the, not 
conclusively determined it was no, carried. No, that was bull crap that was too. just the media saying it was. Who are we kidding with these guys? North Korea is cut off from the internet. Yes. They don't have any these skills. It just doesn't make any sense at all. Now, I want to point out that in the past 12 years, Sony has been hacked a total of 56 times. Let us not forget the 2011 uh, PlayStation Network hack, where they literally had users' passwords and names and usernames in an Excel spreadsheet. You know, this, is, this is not... It, Sony has been warned over and over again just by being the target of attacks. Uh, the, the, the Sony definitely has culpability in, in what happened here. Uh, this is, seriously, if you look at the list, f- 56 times of reasonably serious intrusions into their network. Uh, regarding the, let me see what I have here. I have two more things. Oh yeah, I, I have the, the CNN piece about North Korea's response. Of course, I don't speak the language, so we can only go by what they say is the correct translation. It doesn't really matter. This is the message that is being propagated about uh, North Korea's response in this CNN uh, package, which I've edited down, actually. Just hours after President Obama... I'm sorry, that is actually a sound effect. They sweetened this video to see the president. He's walking down the steps of Air Force One in uh, Hawaii, where he's on vacation, but for some reason, they need to put this big jet landing sound in, even though you don't see a jet landing. It, it kind of messed with my head. Just hours after <laughs> President Obama Strange. lands in Hawaii for the Christmas holiday, <laughs> the regime <laughs> lashes out via its <laughs> state-run <laughs> television. With all of its usual bluster, the regime slams the U.S. government's investigation of the Sony hack as childish that North Korea is being framed, saying it can prove its innocence without using any torture methods like the American CIA. Yeah. <laughs> that I thought was genius. That was cute. Genius. Those <laughs> digs come in response Hello, to President Obama that the evidence points to, to Pyongyang. North Korea directly rebuked the president, saying it is the one who should respond after insults to its supreme leader, but adds it will not conduct terror against innocent moviegoers. And notice that this is not part of what the newscaster said, so I don't know where it's coming from. Rather target the originators of the insult. The movie and the hack at Sony also got North Korea's bankroller and ally, China, to respond. Ah. In China's state-run Global Times, an Editorial calls the movie's vicious mocking of Kim senseless cultural arrogance and that China was once a punching bag for Hollywood. But now that the Chinese market sits as a gold mine for U.S. movies, the teasing shifts to impoverish North Korea. The North Koreans end their fiery rebuttal to President Obama by curiously suggesting that the two countries work together in a mutual investigation to find the real culprits. I love this is the narrative as well. Very curious. I mean, what are they crazy? Are they going to suggest we work together with them to prove their innocence? What is this? This is very curious. the The most obvious thing about this is typically a cyber terrorist, if it's going to be all of a sudden become what they've got the North Koreans dubbed as like the ultimate. I mean, these guys are the biggest cyber terrorists ever. They're so talented. Would usually take credit for something like this. And rare that, especially when we've projected them yeah. as this extreme egotistical yeah. group. See, that's right, bitch. We did that. And, but up? they know that if they took credit for it, they'd be busted eventually because they didn't do it. There's one other anomaly that kind of flew under the radar just before this all really exploded and came to light, President Park of South Korea had this, this, this was all over the news for about 10 hours. And in a message ahead of the ASEAN Korea Commemorative Summit, President Park says the 10 ASEAN member countries having diplomatic relations with both South and North Korea can be of great help as Seoul prepares for a peaceful unification of the peninsula. She added a unified Korea would contribute to peace across East Asia as well. Now, celebrating just how much Korea and ASEAN have developed ties 
since first opening dialogue 25 years ago, President Park said the two sides should forge ahead with an aim of enhancing the quality of life for their respective citizens. The two-day ASEAN-Korea summit will begin in the southern port city of Busan. This is not good. We can't have any talks no, of the unification. Sales, there's numbers. There's numbers. We're losing out here if these guys ever unite. And I know from Don that he, uh, he, he has had very good conversations with Park. And he has always said he hopes she has the courage to push ahead. But I don't think we ever talked about this, but it just hit me. He said, yeah, I really hope she has the courage to push ahead and go for unification. But he said, he said it's going to be very difficult. So here's this big grandiose statement about, oh, you know, we could look at some unification. Uh, uh, no, no, uh, no, no. Uh. Get, it Get it out of this script. <laughs> no, this is not going to work. Get out of the script. <laughs> this is no this, good. This cannot happen. It's going to lose their ass. This is bad. No, no, no. We can't have this. And finally, uh, something from the State Department. I like this. This is a two-parter. Uh, of course, we don't have, it's not really the Matt and Marie show because it's Jen. You know. <sighs> I'm, you know. I've been watching Jen with it in mind that she's really good. Yeah. I think you're right. She's really good. She's, she's, she's kind of cold-blooded. You have to be. You got you to gotta have ice water. The stuff she does, is she never gets flustered. No. And she knows when to cut it off. Mm-hmm. And they have the RT keeps playing her a lot because I guess one of the RT women oh, is hate her. in the in the questioning. Yes, and, yes. and they always show her. Yes. They put the camera on yes. the questioner yes. and she's asking some question yeah. and Jen just puts very, up with it. Very annoying. Well, this is a two-parter. The set, now, this is Matt with a very, very good setup. And it's based upon emails, uh, which have, uh, you know, there's a lot of emails now. Who You don't know any authenticity of these emails, but the emails apparently say that there was the deputy, the deputy, deputy, deputy secretary of state um, was, you know, being um, consulted on the movie. And he, he was, in fact, I have, uh, I think I have some of the, at least what they're saying is uh, copies of the email. But a couple of people are, are, and this makes total sense of being consulted and said, oh, you know, I spoke to someone higher up. They're all in. This is good. You should definitely go ahead with the, with blowing his head up, but maybe cut the actual blowing up scene out. But this look of terror, as you know, he's going to blow up all the, it's very detailed in, in their conversation about this, uh, this movie. By and, the way, if they're that detailed, what, I'm going to interrupt, what causes his head to blow out, blow up? Oh, he's in a helicopter and, uh, I think, uh, uh, is a, a, a some rocket? Did he swallow a, a hand grenade? That's the kind of thing he usually, you know, or get something stuffed in his mouth, and they everyone jumped out, and he blew up the helicopter, took the helicopter with him. You know, very um, common thing would happen. All not the time. exactly, uh, not exactly sure. Yeah. Doesn't really matter. A report this morning that cites these um, emails that were hacked from some, uh, Sony executive emails, um, saying that this. I think we, Matt needs an education too. This, it's no longer acceptable as a professional journalist to say these emails were hacked. Now, yeah. let's, let's get some terminology down, people. State Department officials signed off on or gave the OK to. Oh, this. hold on a second. Now, I didn't have this. I just want to mention this. Brooks, who just went on and on about how this was so terrible. Yeah. Him. He and I guess he, I think he was on another clipboard further on down the line. He makes a big deal. And I, I think there's a piece of this in that clip I played. Mm. A big deal about all these emails saying that news media should be responsible. This is yeah. a classic to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And not reveal any of these emails because they are stolen property. Went on about that whole thing. And now I didn't realize at the time because I said, what? Who cares? And then if it's a bunch of State Department stuff that got out, mm-hmm. yeah, I would say that's the <laughs> reason for taking that approach. Oh, uh-huh. don't, so you're responsible of the news media. And guess what? You haven't seen this in the news anywhere, have you? No. No. This has not been reported. This is only on this. This is borderline clip of the day. No, the clip of the day is what is is where Matt hammers at home. This is just lovely setup all and, right, play, and play, getting sorry. Jen all screwed up. Movie that's caused such a kerfuffle. When, when did the State Department get into the business of telling movie studios what they can and cannot make <laughs> as movies? Red herring. <laughs> what do you mean? We created the, the movie business. We, we are not. Um, so department officials, uh, just so all of you know, routinely meet and consult informally with a wide range of private groups, certainly including uh, 
executives from movie studios and a range of private sector companies Ooh. and individuals secret, uh, seeking information about U.S. foreign policy and U.S. views on development around the world. Mm -hmm. Our message in public and private is the same. We respect <laughs> artists and an entertainer's rights to pr right to produce content of their choosing. We have no involvement in such decisions. Uh, we're not in the business of signing off on content of uh, movies uh, or things along those lines. I know there were a range of different reports out there, so let me just see if I can address some of them, and then we'll get to your next question. Here she goes. She's so good. She's segueing right into her little tabbed information sheets. Uh, well, I'm not obviously going to speak to the specifics of the allegedly leaked emails. I can confirm for you that Assistant Secretary Russell did have a conversation with what? some executives. Did you hear that? Yeah, what did you hear? Allegedly leaked? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, no, this is this, she's reading this off of her tab paper. That's why. Well, why would you use the word allegedly when it was they're leaked? Well, are I, they not really leaked, and they're all no, bull crap? No, this is different, John. This is different. This I don't think this was part of the hack. But I think these were leaked because see, she is responding from a tabbed piece of paper. Of the paper, it says allegedly leaked. So she's just reading it, and it slips by where no one alleged that they were leaked. They were hacked at best, the way Matt describes it. This is not leaking. Leaking is something different. They know that yeah, these were no, leaked. Was, I mean that, too. Yeah, yeah, your point is valid. These were leaked, and she's responding to that, even though no one is accusing anyone of them being leaked. They're, right, they were they're hacked. hacked. So, okay. Of uh, movies uh, or things along those lines. I know there were a range of different reports out there, so let me just see if I can address some of them, and then we'll get to your next question. Tab, tab, tab. Uh, well, I'm not obviously going to speak to the specifics of the allegedly leaked emails. I can confirm for you that uh, Assistant Secretary Russell did have a conversation with Sony executives, as he does routinely with a wide range of private groups and individuals to discuss foreign policy in Asia. Uh, Bob King, uh, contrary to reports, uh, did not uh, view the movie uh, and did not have uh, any contact uh, directly with Sony. Mm -hmm. uh, as we have said, as I, we've noted before, uh, entertainers are free, free. Uh, to make movies of their choosing, and we are not involved in that. So, uh, you, uh, Assistant Secretary Russell and his conversations with the Sony executives, if they got, if those executives got the impression that he was saying. It's okay to do this. They were missing. They were getting the wrong impression. Well, I think I don't think any executive would want the State Department or the United States government to be in the business of signing off on the content of their uh -huh. uh, their movies or television shows of or whatever it may be. Uh, but of course, there's a lot of information that we all know about North Korea and the fact that they have one of the worst human rights records out oh, there, that yes. they have uh, consistently put out threats against the United States. And certainly we share information that is publicly available does, with executives as well. The, OK, that's the setup. Then she she really goes all for it because here comes Matt and he's he's going to hammer it home. Mm -hmm. I, ask, I mean, does the State Department think that that that. Uh, Something like that, whether it is an artistic endeavor or not, is something that is helpful or is something that is appropriate uh, for any company to do. And the reason that I ask this is not to suggest that you're involved in free speech, but remember the, uh, the uh, video of this poorly produced film involving the prophet Muhammad, I believe, ah. <laughs> which was blamed for... <laughs> At this point, I'm like, yeah, Matt, go! The, um, protests in, in, in Cairo. Um, and then Benghazi, which he doesn't say. Weak. You know, the State Department came out and, and, and wanted YouTube to take it down. Right, take it uh, down. And the State Department said <laughs> that it did not represent the values of the United States. So mm -hmm. there is a history of movie criticism or film criticism from this building. And I'm just wondering if this, if this is at all playing into this current situation. I would not put them in the same category, which oh. I'm sure does not surprise you. Um, we it's not the same category. It's a different kind of entertainment. Don't have it's a fiction movie. It's not a documentary about our relationship with the United uh, with North Korea. Mm -hmm. It's not something we backed, supported, uh, or necessarily have an opinion on. Uh, unlike the Muhammad movie, which I guess you did back and support. I don't know. Yeah, okay. hey, you haven't seen it. I have not seen the movie, no. I don't think it's out yet. Well, apparently it is. Oh, apparently it is. All right. Well, it's a, a good move. And I just want to remind everybody that this is absolute bunk and bullcrap, as we learned from Evergreen Clip, Martin Kaplan from the 
Lear Foundation about Hollywood and uh, uh, how they uh, influ- how the government influences Hollywood. So in the course of our work, this is uh, uh, in the two years, 11 to 13, 335 storylines that we uh, worked on uh, have been aired. We've worked with 35 networks in the past four years, 91 different television shows. Woohoo! And countless movies. Yeah, well, it never ends. Anyway, this morning, uh, the, uh, Obama's backing away from it now. He's, <laughs> yeah. He? yeah, oh yeah, of course. It, it, he's backing away. Here he is with Candy Crowley. One of her, uh, this was, must be her swan song, I presume, as she's leaving the network. I wonder if maybe it was fear of lawsuit as opposed to fear of North Korea. Which is possible. There's a threat right there that the people are looking at their theater thinking, you know, anything happens here, I'm, I'm done. It's over. Uh, you know, that's possible. But look. Uh, but look, uh, look. As I said, look. Yeah, the Boston Marathon suffered an actual grievous attack that killed and maimed a number of people. And that next year, we had as successful a Boston Marathon as we've ever had. Uh, you know, sometimes this is a matter of setting a tone and being very clear that we're not going to be intimidated by uh, some, you know, cyber hackers. And cyber hackers. I, I oh. expect all of us to remember that and operate on that basis going forward. Do you think this was an act of war by North Korea? No, I don't think it was an act of war. I think it was an act of cyber vandalism that was oh. very costly, oh. very expensive. Oh. We take it very seriously. Uh, cyber vandalism. Okay, we, now it's gone from North Korea to cyber hackers to act of war to cyber vandalism. All righty then. There's a need for a rescue mission. When the world is threatened, when the world needs help, it calls on America. I'm going to bring story. Up, I want to bring two more clips in from Obama's speech about all this that have nothing to do with the North Korean thing, but it has everything to do with Obama. You know, he plays basketball. Yeah. And he, uh, at golf. Yes. And he can, and he throws a baseball like a girl. Yes. And I don't think he knows anything about football. No, probably not. Because here is Obama talking just casually. And then he goes off script and starts rambling. And mm-hmm. as he does, about and it's, this confuses me because of the second clip. This is a, this is when I want Obama on football one, and then I then the confusing part shows up in Obama on football two. But play Obama on football one, and then I want to comment. Interesting stuff happens in the fourth quarter, yeah. and uh, yeah. and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know, going into the fourth quarter, you usually get a timeout. I'm now looking forward to a quiet timeout. Uh, Christmas with my family. Uh, so I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, a Happy New Year. Kwanzaa. Uh, I hope that all of you get us some time to spend with your families as well because um, one thing that we share is that uh, we're away too much from them. And now uh, Josh has given me the who's been naughty and who's been nice list. <laughs> and I'm going to use it. Uh, he forgot, to take some uh, he forgot okay, Solstice so- and Kwanzaa. I, I know. I found, found that in Festivus. He left that out, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now, I, what I think was interesting is that he, what is he talking about? You don't get a time out <laughs> when you go into the fourth quarter. No, you get a time out when, when you've been a bad boy. And you get, you get you a time out. Sides and there's a time out with a two-minute warning, but there's yeah. no d- the time out. So, so he doesn't know anything. But then I was stunned when he – there was a quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens. His name Joe Flacco. <laughs> and I guess his brother <laughs> yeah. is in the movie if we play Obama yeah. on football, too. On a movie studio because of a satirical movie starring Seth Rogen and James Flacco. Uh, <laughs> the, you are the only person I have heard who figured out what was going on and why he, he uh, mistook Franco for Flacco. Yeah. You're the only Joe guy. Flacco, just thinking Joe Flacco, the quarterback for the Ravens, because it's a local team. Yeah. I mean, the Baltimore is local to Washington D.C., so it's like a local team. And he probably heard of him. And you know, I still think he doesn't know anything about football, or he even watches it. I I, I saw a uh, someone immediately created a Twitter account, uh, James Flacco, 
And yeah, th- James hey, Flacco. Thanks, President Obama, for the for the shout out. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you're the. I think you are absolutely. You are the only person who has figured out why he made that mistake. Yeah, yeah. Well. He was hit football in the mind in the fourth quarter. You get your time out. You know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, John, I want to thank you for your courage and say, in the morning to you, John C. Dvorak. In the morning to you, Adam C. Curry. In the morning to all the ships at sea, boots on the ground, feet in the air, subs in the water, and all the dames and knights out there. In the morning to everyone in the chat room, noagendastream.com. Good to see you all there uh, working with us. Let me see how many. Uh, let me see how many people we have uh, listening to the stream right now. Let me see. We have uh, oh, eight hundred and fifty-three. Not bad for a Sunday. In the morning to our artiste Cosmo. Thank you very much for the artwork for episode uh, six seven nine er with a uh, little uh, Kim Jong Il in the background there of Dan Rad. That was a nice piece of art. Very very functional, and we always look forward to uh, what our artists will bring us next at No Agenda Art Generator. Uh, dot com. This is where we thank our producers, uh, executive producers and associate executive producers, for they are the ones, uh, just like really like Hollywood works, uh, they're out there um, really helping us with, uh, with the big tickets. And, you know, we don't have uh, actresses for anyone to bang, or actors for that matter, so we'd like to give you credits at the front of the show for supporting us financially. Yes. And I want to thank a few right now. I, I'm looking for you to see if Oscar Nadal actually sent us anything in. You mean because uh, uh, I don't have an email from him. I don't have an email either. He promised that this was going to happen. Is this a, is this a, a duplicate or? A... Well, this was. I don't know what this one is because his other one, Oh Nadal, which comes in, is the sixty nine sixty nine hmm. came in, and then there's this one that's kind of pending. We'll find out in the in the weeks ahead. Also, Barry Hanna. Let's start with R.S. Bagwell in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, he uh, sent uh, one, two, three, four dot five six. My absolute favorite donation. <laughs> this is a great. This is a good day. This is nice. Yeah, yeah. We had a, a lot of people step up. And let me just read. He has a very short note, and this is something people. Should, this is an interesting idea, and I. I he may have mentioned it last year, but I don't remember it. But he, now he's, he's, essentially, he's essentially he's essentially a baron. He's now a baron. He's never asked for any of these things. We have to. Has he been knighted? I wonder. Hmm. But this is his fourth. Wow! I annual don't... donation of one, two, three, four dot five six. He wants job karma. Please send me job karma. I've done this the past three years, and karma continues to come through for me so i can push it along to both of you so every year he, he, he gets his karma then he sees what happens if he, he then he sends us uh, another one two three four five so he's done this four years in a row Four years in a row well and i should, think that's remarkable well he should be uh he, he should be barroned and knighted at least i don't think he's, i don't well think we'll look knighted. into it and we'll, we'll give him a special ceremony right in the first of the year Absolutely. Let's give him the jobs karma because the, here it is, your annual karma. Jobs, 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 and jobs. Let's vote for jobs. Yeah! You've got karma. Nice. Thank you, RS Bagwell. And then we have this anomaly. Uh, hold on one second. Let me try one more search. I, I already looked because I recall the email Oscar sent. Yeah, he sent, but it was about this other small amount of money. Mm. Uh, blah, 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 blah. let me take one more quick quickie this only takes a second well i i have the spreadsheet for thursday it was the same number it says karma works more details to come and a bigger donation so i don't know yeah, well the I bigger donation know. is his uh is this one which is nine hundred thirty six dollars and seventy two cents with no note okay. so if he has something to say he'll He's tell us later let us know uh, then we have barry hannah who i can't find anything from from uh Ut- Okatox. Oh, I know. Alberta. But, you know, I know Okatox. Yeah, Okatox. They have a big rock that means big rock. This yeah, is, this is big, big rock, rock, and it's in a movie. This big rock. Yeah, well, there you have it. Anyway, Barry, Barry also noteless, noteless. Mm-hmm. Barry's uh, uh, from uh, six hundred dollars. So Okatox. those are the big three for today. Uh, Todd McGreevy in Davenport, Iowa, three hundred fifty dollars, and he says, uh, "Thanks for the seven years of enlightening us slaves. Love the show notes. Hooray!" 
Okay. Uh, one of the best parts of the show. <laughs> Donate and support the further development of the No Agenda Show Notes Uber Search tool. Currently in beta, I want to create a landing page that distills your brilliant find of the real value of the 97% scientist consensus on global warming, which is now cropping up here and there. Other people got a clue. Right. Imagine being uh, able to point your dinner guest to a simple URL that, okay, I'll write the column. <laughs> yeah, it's about well, time. Right. It's going to be co-authored, so yeah. you get the your yeah. credit. Yeah, simply proves only thirty three percent of nearly twelve thousand scientist abstracts endorse global warming, not ninety seven percent. You're being lied to, folks. Again, he says, uh, keeps the discussion short while they're all grabbing their smartphones. Here's to a prosperous twenty fifteen for those listening to No Agenda behind enemy lines, <laughs> which should be in Washington D.C. Yeah, correct. Sir Ted ha- Hosman in San Jose, California, 34567. Sir Ted uh, of San Jose checking in once again for my annual birthday donation. We have you on the list December 22nd. Sure do. Nicholas McFall in Herndon, Virginia, 23611. Gentlemen, I'm finally ready to step up and take my place at the No Agenda Roundtable. I've been a loyal listener for seven years, but only started donating this year. The analysis presented on the show is outstanding. I couldn't think of a better show to support. I would encourage every listener to make a donation, even small ones, as the first is the hardest. Donating to No Agenda Show has made me more charitable in other situations as well. This is a, a known outcome of, of support. It's you, if you support, it, it, it changes the way things work if you donate. Uh, Donating to No Agenda Show has made me more charitable in other situations as well. One, the unadvertised one of the unadvertised side benefits. I'd like to be known henceforth henceforth as Sir Nick of the South Side. Oh yeah. Uh, I'd like it a is it ISIL or ISIL ISIS or ISIL L G Y Karma shot for the show. Hosts and all the producers of the best podcast in the universe. Thanks. Sir Nick of the South Side. I, I'm not, you know, this is problematic because I'm not really remembering any. ISIS ISIL? No, I mean, we have a, um, let's see what we have. We have. There uh, was a couple of clips. We have O'Biden. Oh, let me see. Um, I, I don't remember. John, I re- oh, shoot. What is going on? You know, on? I use O'Biden in common conversation now and nobody ever. <laughs> No, no, no one ever, no one questions it, whatever. It's like, eh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, no bite, yeah, yeah I'm, right. sure, I'm sure you're right. Now, of okay, course. Well, we well, don't have that clip, well, so sorry. Um, sorry. I, uh, oh, hold on a second. Let me, let me bash this thing over the head for a moment. Let me see if I can get this for you. I don't know what's going on. Oh, come on, people. It's a computer. Yeah, no, it's a people, believe me. Okay, hold on. What is this? Ugh. This is... It's like my something gets fuck. <sighs> Give me one second. Uh, now I have to I have to conquer this. All right, this is all I have. What kind of a machine is this? Is 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 we will follow them to That's the it. gates of hell. Gates of hell. Of hell. Yeah. That's what it we got it. We're done. We're good. Yeah. You've got karma. Karma. You got it. We're done. We're good. I'm amazing. Yeah, got, that was the clip he wanted. That was the one he wanted. I found it. Yeah, I saw I It was worth it. Uh, well, I don't know about it that. It was worth it. it. It was worth it. Come on. It was worth it. Roderick Leonard in Charlotte, North Carolina, 20202. ITM boys, your analysis of late has been spot on. Spot on. I say. Keep up the good work. I punched my friend Ken in the mouth several times before he caught the no agenda fever, but he's hooked now and just recently punched his wife too. <laughs> I wonder what newcomers think of when they hear this stuff. This is not good. You shouldn't be punching. Punching his wife. wife. What? No, and they're this, encouraging it. This is not Let's good. Let's call him out for being a boner who loves the show but hasn't donated yet. Douchebag. You're my sole news source. <laughs> well, that well, is. Well, there you yeah. go. The other news is, we, as I mentioned in the newsletter, which was actually co-written this week. Um, what do you mean? What do you mean co-written? You had your name on it. It's normally on Saturday. It's just a newsletter from me. Oh yeah, I, I think you I did pretty you good. Didn't, you didn't care. No, I, I did very well. Uh, and it, it's that you get to watch the real news or the real news, the, the commercial news, and laugh at it because it's so it's actually hilarious. Yes. Anyway, shows like this are the only real unowned media, and we must support the cause. Exactly. Yes. 
So he once said, clippity clop, don't eat me, Hillary. Her head is gone, little girl, yay. It's clippity clop. The message is clear. Just clippity clop. <laughs> eat me, Hillary Clinton. And her head is gone. Yay! You've got karma. Huh. Uh-huh. It's actually not bad. Yeah, it's a so, lot of work, but yeah. Yeah, well, oh yeah, I would push a button. Oh, so, yeah, it's one button, yeah. I'm not doing anything else, no. That's fine. You should have, how about that for an idea? You put him in a little queue and you hit one button. It's, hmm? not, it's not so much the hitting the button, it's finding all of the different things that people want. That's Sir Baz the, Von Bateau in Bateau Bay, New South Wales, Australia, $200. Um... Hi there, John and Adam. It's been a while since I donated uh, last, so here it's time to send some Christmas cash. Christmas cash. <laughs> to assist in keeping you off the cheese line. <laughs> can I have a, you slaves can get used to mac and cheese. Uh-huh. Uh, the 4X Boom Shakalaka Karma. Uh, yeah, we can do that. Hold on a sec. Yeah. Yeah, I see this is... Uh... Keep up the great work and have a cool Yule, he says. Cool Yule. You slaves can get used to mac and cheese, mac and cheese, mac and cheese, macaroni and cheap cheddar melted together. Mac and cheese, mac and cheese, mac and cheese. Boom shakalaka, boom shakalaka, boom shakalaka, and boom shakalaka. You've got karma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. That's our group of executive and associate executive producers for show uh, 680. That's right. So we have a, another show coming up, of course, and we need all the support we can get all the time. That is our special Christmas extravaganza. Right. And that will be show 681, reminding you to go to Dvorak.org slash NA and find a program there. Or just go to that, you know, the any of the links that we sent you in the newsletter. Yeah, they're all valid. Dvorak.org. Slash N A. Of course, we always need you to be out there doing your utmost to help us propagate the formula. Our formula is this: we go out, <laughs> we hit people in the mouth. <laughs> World order. Shut up, slave. Shut up, slave. There you go. There we go. There we go. <sighs> that is indeed interesting, though the uh, that Will Heard guy about uh, Cuba. Of course, I looked into. Oh yeah, the... now I'm uh, I'm going to do some research on this guy because I'll bet you if you look into it, you're going to find some information that is bull crap. All you have to do really is look at that video, which is about it's about 25 minutes, and he gets tired at the end. And then he starts saying, "Well, look, this is what I've been talking about for 19 months, and you know, this is my background, this is my expertise, right? This is what I do, right?" And it's just, "No, no, I'm sorry, dude. This is not what you do." Um, but this Cuban Liberty and Democratic Society Act of 1996, not 86, is the Libertad Act. Um, I think he is right, though, in that regard. I do not see how. No, no, it's, he's right. Yeah. It's been talked about. A... If, on other outlets, uh, they talk about this to an extreme. They say all Obama can do is relieve, you know, make it easier to try. He can't do anything about no. most of these sanctions because no. they're written in law. They're they're it's a congressional. The Congress has to change things, and the Republicans aren't going to do that. No. I mean, we already got the shot over the bow by Rubio. And what? so, no, they're not going to change anything. They're just going to, now we can travel a little yeah. easier, go yeah. back and forth, but there's the, all the other stuff still in play. Let's go. And they've apparently been sent, shipping them food. I was watching RT, obviously. You get some of this. <laughs> yeah. They were shipping yeah. them food all along, the Americans oh, have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In a roundabout way. Oh, we've done all kinds of, uh, with work. All kinds of work. But once the Republicans get a clue that the Canadians are buying the place yeah. up, uh, they should change the law. Let's go down under for a moment. Uh, 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 Prime Prime Minister Abbott, he's is he Prime Minister right? Abbott? I don't think we have one of those. We're gonna need one pretty soon. We're gonna need an Abbott uh, shout. Just all we need is the Lucas the Abbott and Costello. <laughs> um, he, you know, it's so we have this one event, which uh, of course is not it's just a, a nut job. Whether he was a patsy or not, I mean the guy is completely psycho. Uh, and because he asked for a flag, this is now, you know, we are no longer innocent in Australia. This is, this is the terror. The terror is here. This is it. It's all over, people. 
we are now we we are no longer innocent these are the things of these are this is what being said but in fact here is abbott just laying it all on these events do demonstrate that even a country as free as open <laughs> as generous and as safe as ours is vulnerable to acts of politically motivated violence madam speaker regrettably for some time to come australians We'll have to endure more security than we're used to yeah. and more inconvenience than we'd like. Yeah. Regrettably, for some time to come, <laughs> the delicate balance between freedom and security may have to shift. I love it when they do that. Oh, that was slick. I Play this. So just as an aside yeah. about all these dangers of living in Australia because you can't ha- own guns. Play yeah. the clip. Yeah. Uh, stabbings in Australia. Australia stabbings. Uh, yeah, make sure this is going on at the same time. Of course, yes. In Australia, eight children have been found dead and a woman injured in apparent mass stabbing. Woo! The bodies were found at a home yeah. in Manura, a suburb of Cairns. Hello? Hello, safety? This is Liberty calling. F*** off, douchebag. <laughs> there you go, everybody. Hey, Australia, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I looked at this thing. It's the um, Foreign Fighters Bill Act. Actually, <laughs> Counterterrorism Legislation Amendment, the Foreign Fighters Bill of 2014. This is great. <laughs> Australia's current counterterrorism laws comprise four legislative regimes introduced under the uh, Howard administration. So we have uh, some things are going to be changing. Uh, so they have they already had control orders to control the behavior of a person where it's considered necessary to prevent the terrorist act control orders. I love this. Huh. The the, the prison colony is resurrected. Preventative. Yeah, well, that's a natural preventative detention orders, which allow police to detain a person for up to 14 days if there are reasonable grounds to suspect he or she is planning or will engage in a terrorist act. Stop search and seizure powers, which allowed police to stop and search persons, vehicles, premises, seize items that could be used in a terrorist offense like you know peroxide. Question and detention warrants, which allowed the ASIO. This is the, the ASIO. This was the, um, you can't to have more than three people in a room together or something. Yeah. To immediately <laughs> yeah. De- detain a person for questioning. Yeah, and connect- solitary yeah. confinement. They're looking for that. That's okay. next. So now we have new offenses for traveling to a, quote, declared area. This is now new. Um, the bill has introduced a crime punishable by, by up to 10 years imprisonment. For a person traveling to an area in a foreign country that has been declared by the Australian government to be one where a listed terrorist organization is engaging in hostile activity. Mm. That is a declared area. They uh, can't so, go there. No, well, you can, but if well, you... Well, do we have a list of the declared areas yet? Um, well, we do know that uh, the foreign minister has declared Syria's Al-Raqqa province, which is um, the... De facto oh, capital. So you go to Syria. You just to go there for you know to hang out for a while. Then you go to the province. How are they yep. going to know you went there? Well, if they if they catch you, they might see you with a drone. Uh, new offenses for advocating terrorism. The second what does offense. That mean? <clears throat> well, would you like to hear it? Yeah. What is advocating terrorism? <clears throat> Uh, This is the second offense introduced by the bill. Makes it a crime for a person to intentionally advocate. The doing of a terrorist act or the commission of a terrorist offense where he or she is reckless as to whether another person will actually do the act or commit the offense. And this is uh, interesting. So you, if, if you did this on, on the tweeters, for instance, and someone read it, <clears throat> that, you know, it'd be reckless for you to do this in public. If you said, hey, you should go blow something up. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, this I think this is a free speech issue right there, which I guess, I don't know, Australia doesn't have that, perhaps. No, 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 they obviously don't. Uh, they've, uh, the other couple things I've added here, the foreign minister, foreign affairs minister can now suspend a person's passport for a period of up to 14 days. Mm, on the uh, If there's reasonable grounds of suspicion, the person may leave Australia to engage in conduct that might prejudice the security of Australia or a foreign country. My goodness. <laughs> Not only proof. Hey, I think you might be going over to do something. I you should just give me your passport. No, they took that from our playbook. The immigration minister must now cancel a person's temporary or permanent visa if there's a reasonable suspicion the visa holder might be directly or indirectly a risk to security. 
If the risk is confirmed, the visa holder's family members may, at the minister's discretion, also have their visas canceled. Um, Customs officers now have the power to detain persons suspected of committing any federal offense. Hold on a second. Yes, sir. Are are they talking about which visas are they talking about? If you're coming from a different country. Oh, if you're coming in. Yes, yes. If you're you're a guest, if you're a guest. And, and, okay. And customs officers, customs officers, if you're going into Australia, to buy, I'm going into Australia. Hey, Australia, here I am. They have the power to detain persons suspect, suspected of committing any federal offense that is punishable by imprisonment of 12 months or more. But you just got there. Yeah, but they can grab you. Wait then. a minute, hold on a second. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're, okay, you you're going to Australia. They can stop. Oh, am I? I'm in Australia. <laughs> now, what? offense can you possibly create you haven't even gotten past the border guy well maybe i just tweeted hey i'm here to see if i can find any terrorists to blow some stuff up i don't know something like that it could be anything that would be an offense under this bill yeah but they usually don't let you communicate when you're in that area Hmm. so you land in the you're they i've landed you but when you're (laughs) landing in from outside in the united states no cell phones. Oh, no, 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 no. You, can do, you can't do, you can't do the While tweet. you're taxiing, while you're taxiing to the gate, to the jetway, you could be on your phone. All right. Well, I guess you could do that. Here I am. We're ready to blow up things. Uh, yeah, I guess you could. Okay. Giving, Continue. Per, so giving customs officers greater power to detain persons without charge risks infringe the rights of freedom for any arbitrary detention, of course. Uh, but this is all obviously for your safety, and it shall not be questioned. Please do not question authority. Here is freedom. Subjugation is liberation. Contradiction is truth. Those are the facts of this world, and you will all surrender to them. You pigs in human clothing. That's right, pigs in human clothing. Uh, one thing on the caliphate I found here. We sent another 1,500 troops to uh, Iraq wasn't widely reported no um, it's embarrassing but there is yes of course it's embarrassing there is something new which john Kerry started two weeks ago you know we've had this issue this branding issue which we quite frankly think is, has been kind of good isis isil is now now everyone's just saying dash this is just it's this is the new 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 official word Dash. Yeah, no, I saw this dash thing emerge, and I can't find the genesis for it. Well, I have some of that here. I'll, first, let me play for you Lieutenant General James Terry with the announcement of um, uh, more troops going to uh, to destroy, uh, no, to degrade and ultimately destroy, and it used to be ISIL, now it's dash. Iraqi security forces must be a capable force, one that can restore Iraq's sovereign borders, retake territory from Daesh and secure the Iraqi people. An offensively minded and trained security force backed by an inclusive government of Iraq is the key to future stability. As you know, we have been authorizing additional 1,500 U.S. personnel. They will serve in non-combat roles to support additional advice and assist requirements in the building partner capacity effort. In addition, we anticipate coalition contributions that should produce at least an additional 1,500 personnel in these efforts. We're seeing initial successes in this fight. Uh huh. My assessment is that Daesh has been halted in transitioning to the defense Dash. and is attempting to hold what they currently have. You will see some local counterattacks in that regard. Oh. There will be challenges down the road that will require patience. The government of Iraq understands the grave threat they face and they are resolved to defeat it. The Combined Joint Task Force represents what I believe is a new chapter of what ISIS will be a successful campaign to bring the coalition's power to bear and ultimately lead to the defeat of Daesh. Defeat of Daesh. Okay. So Daesh is... All right, this, be- this began in June. And this is the French. Yes, this is the correct, French, correct. The French decided they're going to use the Ara- Arabic-derived term Daesh, D-A-E-S-H, right. or it's also D, D-A- I think is I, apostrophe, something or other. Yes. And uh, it never took, but now it's taking. Then that's the interesting part. Well, yes, well Kerry apostrophe ish. Yes. When when, when Kerry, which means uh, Dalat nation, uh, Al Islamia, 
Iraq, it's just complicated. Uh, Sham, which is Syria and the Levant. So it's really a collection of and ISIS. It started and ISIL. In, this, this started in June, and now in December, it's now being recognized by us. Why? What's the reason for the change? I don't know. Other than that, I believe when Kerry went to get new authorized use of military force. And when he was being questioned, we played one or two clips because, of course, he's so boring. I can't risk my reputation with you anymore to play any more carry clips. Uh, he was using Dash, which I believe he needs to encompass more groups. It's such an encom- all-encompassing uh, name. This, you know, it's everybody now. It's just everybody. Yeah. You say, just, I just want a, a, to be able to use force on anybody who's brown and lives in this general sandy area, which is pretty much what exactly what he asked for. Hmm. All right. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't see any other reason why. It's, it's, these guys are so tricky, John. All they care about is it's using words to, to, get, to get whatever they think is necessary, whatever they need, whatever they want. Well, on the topic of, uh, of this area... I was combing through old clips, which I do occasionally to look to re-listen to them and see if there's anything that we can use or there's stuff that we missed. So about 2010, I heard this, and I've never heard about it since. I don't think we—it was either not played and we never discussed it, Mm -hmm. uh, and I haven't heard anything about it since. Mm -hmm. But this was a uh, 60 Minutes report on— on Afghanistan and how we, you know, the Taliban is winning the war. And so the Afghani people won't do anything, do any deals with us because they think we're just going to leave and screw them. And they're all going to get killed for talking to us sort of thing. And this was about that. And, and right in the middle of it, because they were talking about a, uh, or discussing a, a improvised explosive device that they were taking out and then there was going to be an ambush. It was like, but this little one little clip, this 2010 clip with new information is just, I don't remember it. I don't remember picking this up before and I don't know what's going on now, but this is interesting. Using new and secret technology, the Marines destroyed an IED from long range while it was still being planted in the road. I've got information, man. New shit has come to light. Uh huh. <laughs> I was hoping you'd follow up with that. <laughs> I'm there, brother. Do you remember this? <laughs> I don't. Some, I don't remember this. Ray gun or some beam or something that. Oh, energy, yeah, energy directed weaponry. Of course, this is what our new. Uh, if he's affirmed, confirmed, this is what our new Secretary of Defense uh, is specialized in: directed energy weapons. Yeah, yeah. But so when you see the guys planting the thing, you shoot down a little ray beam, and then it explodes. Yeah, and blows him up with it. Yeah, it's a genius. I would assume that if it's some sort of device that if it's directed energy and they could heat, it doesn't take much to blow up something if it's explosive, if you can heat it up. Mm -hmm. So you aim this thing there and it heats it up, target it and heat it it up and blow it up. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) While the guys are still there. Yeah. (laughs) It's beautiful. Genius. Are are we good or what? Yeah, we're great. Yeah, this is Ash Carter. This is the new uh, the new guy if he's confirmed, and I really have seen no reason why he won't be. He um, he's really all about the Straits of Malacca and China. He, se- he seems to be much more interested in that region of the world than the Middle East, which is interesting because you kind of think that the reason Hegel was pushed out is because Hegel didn't want to do all this this bull crap in the Middle East. Um, and I but I see nothing. But uh, Asia news coming from his general direction, in particular the Straits of Malacca, which is all about blocking China's waterways. So we got to keep our eye on this guy. I have no idea what you know. Did you notice know, there was some action with Putin and Russia and and that that area too? Yeah, but in fact, the BBC it was unbelievable. The BBC had this whole special on uh, it, it was it was, it was like a mini super package. Like a mini special, a super package, kind of in between, like a 15-minute thing. And, and of course, well, you know, Putin hates gays, and gays are, you know, the, you're not safe in Russia if you're gay. It's not, you can't, no, no, no. And, and this, they bring this news as if it's 
All true, all happening now. Even this giant iPhone is unacceptable here now, taken off the streets after the boss of Apple revealed he was gay. This is where the iPhone statue used to stand. Now there's this festive tree here and just an empty space, like a new monument to increasing intolerance here. Human rights activists say that since the law banning so-called gay propaganda was passed, it's like people have been given a license to be homophobic. They say it's not just about artwork, of course. Homophobic attacks are on the rise. So this has long been debunked, this debunked. iPhone thing. And the iPhone thing, I have a clip. Apple is so big in Russia that they had to back off on a couple of... <laughs> yeah, because of the ruble. The ruble thing is screwing them. And, and, this, and they showed... This was from RT, of course. So this uh, of could course, be yeah. all rigged. It may all be not true. Yeah. But they, they go to an Apple store in Moscow, and their place is packed with people buying iPhones and Apple products. But this is the story. It's kind of interesting. Apple were forced to stop trading online here in Russia this week. Their products at one point were $100 cheaper to buy here in Russia than in the U.S. The tech giant justified this move on their side as extreme ruble fluctuations. <laughs> I had that last night, uh, extreme ruble fluctuations. Yeah, I bet you did. It didn't feel very good. Now, the... They not only have the places to buy the phones in stores, but they have an online presence, up, which is what they had to back off on because the ruble was screwing right. them. Right. And they were selling all the Apple products online for $100 less than we have to pay. <laughs> yeah. So how does that other story make any sense at all? I don't know. It, it's, it's bull crap. We know that this, this thing was not removed because Tim Cook, Tollins, Tom, whatever his name said, he's gay. Tom Collins. <laughs> Tim Collins. The, you know, this is not true. It's just not true. And they are lying. But, you know, we heard about this somewhere, so I guess it's true. And, oh, look, this empty spot looks like a new monument. And just went on. You know, the, uh, if, you are, uh, if you are gay in Saudi Arabia, off with your head. They get beheaded all the time. There, are, there are more crimes against gays, lesbians, LGBTQIAAP in the United States than ever occur in Russia. Come on, ah, stop using that. Stop using my gay brothers and sisters for a punching bag for punching your bags. For punching bags because bag. you hate Putin is not okay. And, and you gay gay brothers and sisters, stand up and reject this. Reject it. In other retail news from Russia, <laughs> I had no idea that there was Ikeas all over the place. And they were just, and they showed some movies of it. And they're just like an Ikea in, you know, here in Emeryville. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Just tech shopping that went wild this week. Ikea suspended sales of kitchen and home furniture in Russia because it's been overloaded with orders. The company announced there'll be, uh, there'll be no sharp rises in prices. It'll be a gradual one because of the uh, ruble exchange rate. But that didn't stop the crowds as shoppers expect prices to surge next year. Can you, can you imagine the margin on that crap considering they don't have to even raise the prices? <laughs> I know, it's just junk. <laughs> some so assembly have, some assembly required are the yeah. words are that, that make me shudder. This is but the, if the whole Russian thing is very interesting. We have to keep up with it. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how much to keep up with. Well, there's like it's, they're, uh, they're going ahead. It turns out that our uh, our problems are uh, with Russia are not uh, deterring them from continuing to actually have an economy. Vladimir Putin um, invited. Kim Jong Un to come to Moscow next year to mark yes. the 70th anniversary of the Soviet defeat of Nazi Germany. Right, and uh, he would uh, like to discuss a pipeline. Yeah, huh? Coincidence from uh, no, never from uh, uh, North Korea to its uh, southern neighbor, uh, South Korea, for some uh, Gazprom pipeline. Which, and it makes nothing but sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense for for the South Koreans for sure. Yeah, they don't need ships coming in with the gas when you could pump it in. No. It's, uh, it's flabbergasting that this has not been uh, no. looked at to previously. Yeah. Um, let me see. The Treasury Secretary, th of course, there's so much about the Sony and, you know, whatever. A Christmas, ch -ch -ch, jingle bells. Kwanzaa. Bah humbug, Kwanzaa. Solstice. 
um, that we don't really hear much when the uh, Treasury Secretary speaks. And I found what he's, this is Jacob Liu, who was our uh, new Treasury Secretary. He followed uh, in the footsteps of Tim Geithner, a guy who can't figure out how to use TurboTax, file his taxes. I haven't forgotten. And um, he, the way he put this was very strange. This is about Social Security, and uh, this is kind of his state of the, his annual state of the union, if, you know, how, how much longer this thing is funded. But then for some reason, he pulled a piece out and said, if, you know, if you look at this piece by itself, it's only funded for two years. See if you can figure out what is going on with this and what the messaging is. When considered on a combined basis, Social Security's retirement and disability programs have dedicated funds sufficient to cover benefits for the next 19 years. After that time, as was true last year, it's projected that tax income will be sufficient to finance about three-quarters of scheduled benefits. And by the way, that puts me in a screwed position. That's about, that's about the time that I'm going to retire. No, he said 19 years. You retire in, since you're 50, you had a big birthday. I'm you not retire. Gonna, no, no, th- th- are you kidding me? You retire in 15, 16 years. The retirement well, maybe, age will well, be... maybe they keep moving it up. They'll be raising it up, exactly. They'll probably be 70. Yeah, you, you will be right at the point it happens is boom. And guess there. who's going to be part of that 15% that isn't funded? You know it's going to be podcasters. We're the first to go. Oh, podcasters yeah. first to go. Here's the rest of it. However, Social Security's disability program alone has dedicated funds sufficient to cover all scheduled benefits for only two years. Whoa. As was true last year, beginning in 2016, projected tax income will be sufficient to finance about 80% of scheduled benefits. Legislation will be needed to avoid disruptive reductions in benefit payments to this vulnerable population. Okay. So combined, he says, 18 years. And then we go to 85%. But if you take disability out... That's only good for two years. We need new laws to, I guess, print more money or put some money into the into the coffers. Can he do that? Is that how it works? Do you separate that out, of just, or is this just a, a general way to get more money? Because people are going, holy it's a crap, way to get more money. Because most most of the uh, social security system is legislated, and they just can't randomly cut it off. I mean, it's legislated. You have to provide the money. It's mm-hmm. in the law. Well, this is this does not bode well then. That's bull crap. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I to take it to the down to the simplest aspect, but it's bull crap. No, but I mean, there is a scam out there. They're trying to let's kill Social Security and make these people invest their own money as though they're prof- as a, as though every Tom, Dick, and Harry out there is a professional investor, right. and they're not. I mean, the idea is, yeah, put all your money in the stock market to keep the stock market boosted. Then when it collapses, too bad. Ooh. And uh, which is what would happen. They get, get screwed. Like with all these, a lot of pros lost their ass in the 2007, 2008 debacle. How is the public supposed to fare in this thing? No, you need, the, I don't want to sound like a socialist, but you need the government to, to be the, uh, the fishnet stockings <laughs> that, to catch everything. You damn commie. Yeah. Yeah, commie. Yeah, that's it. Right. We got a rich and poor update, which doesn't bode well. Okay. Into it. Hit it. And the gap between rich and poor in the United States has reached a new high. A new report by the Pew Research Center finds the gulf between rich families and middle and low income families is the largest it's been in 30 years of data collection. Pew found that while affluent families became wealthier from 2010 to 13, middle income families stayed the same while poor families got poorer. Yeah. It's a wonderful life, everybody. You know, something up with that. I also have a, well, I'll say this. I'd like this clip later. Um, here's one that bugged me. This kind of just bugged me. And I went and did some research and looked, you know, you know the Tea Party. Yes, the original Tea Party was, of course, uh, uh, surrounded Ron Paul with his money bombs. And then it was hijacked uh, by um, uh, the Republican fringe. I want to play this 60-minute teaser. Uh, clip and I wanted I want to if there's and if you go look on the Wikipedia at all the Tea Party sites there's one name there's one name you will never find I did searches for the guy's name and this is the the kind of the target of this particular clip. 
Senator Tom Coburn is known as the godfather of the Tea Party. So what, what does he think of President Obama? I just love him as a man. That and other surprises Sunday on 60 Minutes. <laughs> so Tom Coburn apparently... Tom Coburn? The, Tom Coburn <laughs> apparently, according to 60 Minutes and his wonderful uh, journalism, uh, calls him the godfather of the Tea Party. You'll never find any reference like that. And then it turns out he's are. gay, I guess. I don't know what the point of this, this teaser was. I have This is beyond me. I have no idea. No idea. I just find, you know, the, the rewriting history, you know, one of the things we try to do, at least on this show, is be on the right side of history. We try to be on the right side of history and we tr- defend against the constant r- attempts to rewrite history. Yes. yes. And this is a rewrite of history, if there ever was. I mean, Tom Coburn, Tea Party, he's just some guy with a wig. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, but, a little pet peeve. No, you're absolutely right, and this, and of course, Tea Party became Tea Baggers, and it's just, it's a very, it's very. Then it got co-opted by Tea Party Express and those yeah. those douchebags up, uh, all a lot of them out of Texas. All, but this, all of it is, it's just name calling and not good for anything. It's re, all of it's just horrible. I don't like any of it. Here's something else I don't like: <laughs> ants. <laughs> ants. Ants. He says. Uh, play this Colorado sued, a very short clip. Okay. Two states have sued Colorado in the Supreme Court over its legalization of marijuana. Earlier this year, Colorado became the first state to allow recreational marijuana. Nebraska and Oklahoma claim the opening of marijuana shops has led to an influx of the drug in neighboring states. Okay. This is... I think this is what they're going to try to do to get to get this thing reversed, because after the D.C. thing happened. Right. You know, they try to they, they're not going to fund it. These are the Republicans. And uh, so they found two states that were amenable because there's other states bordering Colorado that don't give a crap. Hmm. And I don't even know if Oklahoma does Oklahoma actually bore a border on Colorado. Uh, I think so. Let's, let's take a look on the maps. <laughs> this feels okay. bad. I don't know that. Well, you can't. You know the states. You don't have to know every border, you know, connection. Um, I Oklahoma. believe hmm. maps. Maybe the Panhandle does. I Let's think. back um, on Google Maps. I'm looking. Uh, I'm Kansas is directly north. Yes. And Google Maps is not producing my map. We have uh, Arizona. Yeah. Uh, okay. New Mexico. Okay. Take it, you look at the map. The, the very tip, yeah. the absolute tip, tip of Oklahoma. north of yeah. Texas, yeah. touches Colorado. Right. Barely. Just the tip. So it is a border state, and yeah. Nebraska is the same way. It doesn't really have a big border. Kansas is a border state. They don't care. <laughs> anyway, the point is, I think there's they're going to try to there. go after There's this. nobody in Kansas, man. Come on, we drove they, through they, that. I think they're going to go after this. Uh, the, really? Hmm. Uh, they can't do anything with... Uh, with, they can't get anyone to play ball against Washington because Oregon's all in on the idea that they can get dope up there. And then Montana and Idaho, which are close, the other two close states, they're not going to, yeah, they're not going to mess I don't, I'm not, you know, it's, it's, anyway, you're going to start to see hmm. this sort of thing as a, as a trick to get, um, federales uh, to, to bust balls over, uh, yeah, especially in Colorado weed? where they're very aggressive. <clears throat> Just a different uh, different topic. I, I was reading something in the Guardian today, online, obviously, and and it said it was brought to you by, and there was a link that explained what this meant, and and this is part of how news is changing. Now, the Guardian isn't the Guardian supposed to? Didn't they have a? Don't they have some charter? There's the they're you know holier than thou. And, well, yeah, the charter says we the Guardian. Are holier than thou. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. What it says. And so they have this information uh, page, which I found, called Sponsored Content, Advertisement Ooh. Features, nice. and, co- and Content Supported by Foundations. And, I, and you're a news guy. You, you're a writer. You're a d- d- magazine columnist. You've been a re- reporter. You are a reporter. You're on the beat. You're a journalist. Here. Uh, Guardian News and Media produces a variety of content with funding from outside parties. These sources of revenue allow us to explore, in more depth than editorial budgets would otherwise allow, topics that we hope are of interest to Guardian and Observer readers. 
The presentation of the content makes clear. Well, this is a good bunch of bull crap. I like it. Well, yeah. The presentation of the content makes clear how the content has been commissioned and produced and who has funded it. Uh, one of the three labels will appear on this content, sponsored by, brought to you by, or supported by. And there's a difference in each three, and I, I'd like to discuss these with you. All right. One is sponsored by. Sponsored by is used to describe editorially independent content. We accept funding from sponsors, both for content we are already producing, where using funds from a sponsor allows us to provide more in-depth coverage, and for new projects. Before sponsorship is agreed with a client, relevant senior editors are consulted about its suitability, and the editor-in-chief has the final say on whether a sponsorship deal is accepted. A sponsor whose branding appears on editorial content may have a role in suggesting what kind of topics are covered, but the commissioning editor is not obliged to accept ideas from the sponsor. The content is written and edited by Guardian and Observer journalists or those approved by GNM to the same standards expected in all of our journalism. GNM will not show copy to sponsors for approval. What do you think of this? This sponsored by a business sounds like yeah. na- native advertising to me. It is. Yes. It's bull crap. What, it, what they say too. It's oh, the editor. You know, he's got the file. Say, so, yeah. If you if you're trying to push in a a piece of sponsored content that is a obvious mess, a piece of garbage. Yeah, you're gonna nix it. You say no. You will take your money, but you better come up with something better than this piece of crap. And it, it appears. Well, and then, by the way, this is where this other part comes in. So maybe you should just let one of our writers, because they would like to just write it themselves and give it to you. That would be the approved GNM uh, uh, outsiders. Yes, but you, but you know, if you give it to one of our writers, we can do a better job. Yeah. for you. Oh, it will cost you more yes. because you know you're yes. having to pay our writers, which yes. don't work as cheap as the PR people work. Yes. Or they, in fact, it's not true. But they, yeah, that's what that is. And it's it's just total uh, native advertising and it couched beautifully to make it seem like there's no chance whatsoever of corruption when, in fact, they want to run something. They're big advertisers. They've got these guys by the nuts. Yeah. And they say, you know, you yeah. don't have to run this piece. I know you have some issues with it, but, you know. We got, we'll just pull everything that we have. Yeah. We'll just pull all of our ads and we'll walk it over to the telegram. To the Daily Mail or the, uh, yeah. yeah or the yeah. Well, or even any of them, they'll all take it. And I would be surprised if by now all the British uh, tabloids and all the British bro- broadsheets don't all take native advertising in some form or other. And so, it's, you know, you, you take it. You take it. You need the money, and you're not going to have them pull everything. Let's look at the— do it. They're let's, pushing the papers around. Let's look at the other options, shall we? Other options. This is for, the, this is for people who are reading the newspaper, by the way. This is for, to know what so-called product you're receiving. Two is brought to you by. Brought to you by is used to describe advertisement features that are paid for and controlled by the advertiser rather than the publisher, and are subject to regulation by the Advertising Standards Authority. This content is produced by commercial departments and does not involve GNM staff journalists. That's brought to you by. So that, that's just an ad, which is a little fuzzier because... In yeah, this- you, how, well, you wouldn't know the difference because they're using the same type font. <laughs> Yeah. It looks just like a story. Yes. You had to yeah. pay it probably a little more. Yeah. Sponsorship's probably cheaper yeah. uh-huh. because, you know, you lose a little control. But if you have total control, which I didn't, that is like, yeah, that's an ad. Yeah. But it's only said brought to you by. And so, and a casual reader, yeah, if the, you're looking uh, at the bottom and you see sponsored by or brought no, to you brought by, what's to the you difference? By, no, the, no. What Spon- would be the difference to the reader? Without what? looking at this thing, no one's oh. going to go look at these these right. rules. It's, this, it's just going to say. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be the yeah. same. Well, then we have the third one, which makes it even more complicated. We have that we have sponsored by, brought to you by, and then the third one, supported by. And supported by hmm. is used to describe editorially independent content that the Guardian has produced with funding from foundations around the world who support specific projects. Examples could be what 
a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to help support the Guardian's global development site, or the Joseph Roundtree and Open Society Foundations, that's Soros, supported the award-winning Reading the Riots series. So that's, so that's content, I, I presume very much like PBS NewsHour or the Kaiser Health Report, which is funded directly from foundations, non-governmental organizations who all have an agenda, to support specific projects. Now, let me ask you, if this Guardian's Global Development Site, which I'll go take a look at right now, um, Western firms reduce Eritrean miners to abject slavery, life on the Ebola front line, I thought of nothing else except my death. Thai government censured for failure to tackle lead pollution, or lead pollution, sorry, lead. Uh, Sustainable development goals, eight ways reality can match ambition. This is all presented by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. They are funding this entire, all of this. Ebola in Sierra Leone, burial workers put dignity before danger. Now, what was the, 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 of the three, give me the order again. Okay, the order is sponsored by... Okay. Brought to you by and supported by. Okay. So the, the, the brought to you by is just a straight ad. The other two are kind of beating sketchy. around the bush ads. <laughs> yeah, sketchy. Now, the funny thing about the Guardian, because I'm doing some looking around, they have their sponsored features as an actual link. So you can see what they are. Sponsored features, planning and pitching nonfiction. Beginner's Guide to Social Media for Business, How to Write Better Copy. I, 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 I'm sure if I look at any one of these, I can tell who the advertiser is. Uh-huh. Why is it important to marry data quality with patient safety? So, oh, that's got to be really exciting. <laughs> I have IBM Watson. Or, five uh, things to do in Brighton at Christmas. <laughs> brought to you by the locals in Brighton. Uh-huh. <laughs> How to be a music journalist with Tim Jones on the December 18th. How to write and publish a book about food. Take lots of pictures of the food and tweet them. Yes, that's <laughs> get your followers up. Before There's another you, writing thing. There's a bunch of the writing things. Here's another copywriting, a two-day boot camp. <laughs> Infographic, storing of storytelling, a one-day workshop. Okay, let's pick one of these and see who they Now, have. where are you looking? Where are you finding this? What are you I looking I found at? this under theguardian.com slash tone slash sponsored features. So they apparently b- put their sponsored features on a, on a page for people who want to look at just the sp- what idiot wants to look at just sponsored features. I would assume there's a brought to you by our support features too. Maybe. I don't know. This is the only one I could find. Well, no, these would all be sponsored features. Oh, wait, sponsored was. Was the first that's one. A, that's a category, the, right. The that's staff the is writing these right. on behalf of an advertiser. Right. Well, uh, let's take the who, how to be a music journalist by with Tim Jones. Who is no, I think Tim Jones? Probably at the uh, bottom. It should say at the bottom of the page. It should say sponsored by. I'm going and it. Well, oh, it has, it has the name of the company. It doesn't. Say, I don't see it. I don't see it either. It's supposed to say sponsored by. Yeah. Hmm. Oh wait, no. Tutor profile, no. Doesn't uh, say sponsored by. So they're not even doing that much. That's strange. Well, this is, this is right music may look blah blah blah. What's well, this you, is this is a sales job to uh, to sign up to how to become a music journalist, and it costs you ninety nine dollars uh, pounds. Uh, but, and it's ad is being done by the Guardian. Okay, they're sponsoring a it house themselves. ad. A house ad. <laughs> okay, that's a house ad. Let's find a All different right. one. All right, house ad. Uh, they should be- put beginner's like guide to social media for business. How about that? Okay, let me. I can't get back to the page. There it is. Oh, this is this is this is all there. This is another uh, uh, house ad. Yeah, two forty nine. So, two... so this whole thing seems to be rather dubious. Yeah, they're just this there's got to be one here that's not from them. <laughs> I don't know. Here's a new image technology transforms color blind viewing experience. This cannot be from them. Uh, let's go to the bottom. What do you see? This is U U E A spinoff. This is iTech. Okay, it I-tech. says it. Yeah, iTech. Does it say it's uh, Does it say it's sponsored by iTech? I'm looking. Currently, iTech supports individuals with dotornopia. No, pro- protonopia. Doesn't say anything. I don't. I don't see. It really doesn't. Doesn't disclaim it, it, does it? 
No, this is a plug. because it, it just says, says brought to you by, very small on the left-hand side, UEA, oh, University of East is. Anglia. Oh, okay. wow! Could the type be any? The type font be ever any, any smaller? Well, right, yeah, but it's not as part of the the stream of the story. No, it's in on the fact, left. they have a UEA advertisement on the right column. Oh yeah, click here. Apply to the university. Known for the experience. This is the worst kind of journalism in the world. Yes, it's the the piece is written by for the University of Anglia. It has a very small thing that says. Brought to you by, it doesn't even refer to the article. Sponsored by, it says sponsored by. Sponsored oh, mine by. says brought to you by. But it should be, it's from the sponsored by page. Well, maybe they mix uh, the brought to you by and the, the sponsored. hell knows what's going this on? This is terrible. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And then an advertisement right next to it. <laughs> Click here. <laughs> This is horrible. Now, this is where we can just, I just wanted to use and this. And this is the Guardian. Yeah. Winner serve the Pulitzer Prize, it says under the logo. <laughs> That's it's right. Unacceptable behavior. It says right there, winner of the Pulitzer Prize, yes. And, and, what the, and what they're not writing for commercial interest, MI6 is telling them to write. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. I know. Th- it surprised me, too. That's why I really wanted to bring it up. Just, I... I I was like, wow, do they have any category that's just known as uh, journalism? <laughs> yeah, you can find it in there once in a while. <laughs> it's really Too it's, much work. It's as really, they said in that little pitch about it, well, we, don't, we can't afford to do these stories, but we'll take money and then we'll do them. Well, this is not how we uh, choose to operate anymore. Uh, this is a classic, classic example of you, the audience, uh, being the product. In fact, if I if I load this uh, page right now, but I can tell you here it is. Um, uh, just the Guardian itself. Uh, audience science, Critio, double click, fo- Facebook Connect, Google AdWords, uh, Crux Digital, Outbrain, and just keeps on. These are all the ones that the 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 uh, the, the trackers, the cookies and trackers cookies that are in track- the code. Yeah, that are all just, <laughs> just yeah, they're tracking you yeah. like a dog. Yeah, yeah, like a dog exactly, like a dog what? dressed we, up we as don't Santa track Claus. Anybody. No, in fact, the other day I wanted to just, here's a big secret. I wanted to find out, I had a discussion and some, just some research. What are the top podcast apps used to listen to the No Agenda show? So, right. so Void Zero and I were working on this. And the first thing he says is, well, the concept of the top is kind of the problem. So what do you mean? He says, well, th- there is no actual simple way to calculate these requests. Uh, some apps um, uh, request chunks of uh, the file uh, many times rapidly, which is actually a, a protocol developed by Apple. And it, so it shows up as a, as a whole bunch of lines requesting different portions of the same file. So you have to filter that out. And, you know, there's, there's proxies and uh, network address translation. I mean, there really, truly is no way unless you have some kind of tracking on in the app itself, which doesn't tell you anything about apps, but you know, if you have tracking in the app, yeah, then you can see who's listening and what they're doing. But across all these different apps, you have no idea. You cannot know what the top is. It's just, it's a farce. It's, it's a lie. You cannot track absolute numbers on podcasts. Now you can, there are ways that pod track does it that, give them some other forms of reporting, but truly, you really, you really don't know all that much. It's usually redirects. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's redirect. You don't know if someone stopped. You just don't know. So this model is breaks. It doesn't work. It does not work. And, and, and besides that, you wind up with stupid content like this University of East Anglia puff piece. And that's why I'm very happy that we're doing it the way we do it. University of East Anglia. <laughs> I'm going to show my support by donating to No Agenda. Imagine all the people who could do that. Oh, yeah, that'd be fab. Yeah, on No Agenda. In the morning. Hey, by the way, uh, we, we made some basic decisions on how we would count stuff. Are you interested in what we think? Yeah, what do you think? Okay, so what we think is ve- it's always counterintuitive, where... There's so many more Android handsets out there, but the 
when it comes to podcast listening, head and shoulders above anything, the, for, as far as we know, is the Apple iOS podcasts app. Yes. That's number one. And number two is <laughs> Stitcher. Now, that's both uh, iOS and Android, with uh, iOS being slightly higher than Android. And um, Stitcher. Stitcher. The guys who put ads into the, into the, when you pause it. Stitcher. And number three is uh, Overcast, which is, I believe, uh, iOS only. And then it really drops down, and then you've got all these things like Dog Catcher and, and all these other ones. But uh, it's far and ab- almost everything combined, all other apps barely equal what Apple iOS podcasts app in all of its different versions uh, does uh, with this podcast. And I'm going to presume it's the same for a lot of podcasts. And I find that interesting. Yeah, no, I find it fascinating. I had a a similar kind of fast. I don't, I can't bring it up for some reason, but MailChimp, which takes care of the newsletter. And I hope people would subscribe and not unsubscribe because occasionally it's really great. Um, Yeah, I'll say. And we make a lot of points in there. Good points. And they have a list of the email clients. And by far, the number one... iOS, I bet it's... uh, No, no. The number one email client in general is Google Mail. Oh, Gmail, Gmail, of course, of course. And that's all the desktops. But if you swing over to the mobile, it's iOS completely way head and shoulders above everybody else. And in fact, it is at the transition point where there's more people reading the email on mobile than they are on PCs because casually and I've got the news template is a, is a mobile template. Yeah, so it, it yeah. looks, it looks good on all platforms, but yeah, no iOS. Uh, that is a, uh, you're doing a lot of yeah, no today. I just want to point it out. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah no, yeah, there no. Yeah. I wish I could get to switch it to no. Yeah. Cause I think that's mind boggling. No. Yeah. And by the uh, way, anyway, the, it's just the Apple yeah. just dominates this. And I think it's because when podcasting began, it was pod, yeah. iPod. It was the or, orientation was that. And I think it is carried over as a tradition. Well, I, there's more to it, I think. But um, I, well, I, I, I think it's to. I think I think the experience on Android is poor. And there's, there's been no marketing of any really good apps that do it. Not that the podcast well, you do it. one. Well, I'm thinking about it. Uh, yeah. By the way, I want to point out to everybody. Uh, so just in case it wasn't obvious, we don't do any statistics. We don't crunch the numbers. We don't care. We do not care about who's listening, where they're coming from, whatever. I asked Void Zero to run one log file for one show for 48 hours. And then had us, you know, for two days, we're baffled. I'm like, well, I'm so happy I don't do this anymore. Yeah, it's like, oh, yes. I'd rather have a broad-based audience. We have kids that listen. We have, yeah. you know, people in their 80s listening. And everybody in between, and from all segments of the world. Yeah. Okay, let's thank a few of them. But we don't have to t- show any advertisers any of that, which is great. I love it. Yeah, because you have to prove it, and yeah. you have to do research, and, and all yeah. this stuff. I mean, just, okay, we're, you know, we're, we're not like uh, the, uh, the big podcasts that are selling uh, MailChimp ads, you know? And we're, okay. We'll, but we'll be unfettered, and we will not have to deal with any of this sponsored by bull crap. Right. Right. Which we try to make as clear as possible. Yes. Anonymous comes in for one, two, three, four, five from Ohio, Dayton, Ohio, as a matter of fact. Merry Christmas, he says. Andrew Terry in Brackley, North Hampshire, UK, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, he wants a karma shot for us. We'll put it at that at the end, along with some job karma for everyone who requests that. You bet. Uh, Dogadigi. Dogadigi, go Dogadigi in v- Vucht. Fucht. Fucked. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's what you said. Fucht. Yeah. Fucked. Fucht. $111.11. And he says douchekop. Douchekop. Which, which is a, d- a douche head. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Douche nozzle. <laughs> uh, Patrick O'Barham. In Nooseville, Queensland, $100. He wants a shout out to Uncle Don, who he thinks has been tirelessly working to improve the lives of millions. Maybe would be great yeah. if he'd listen to the show, too. Oh, please. James Wells in Flagstaff, Arizona, 100 Uh Gareth Kuchinkus, Kuchinskus, in, I think, uh, in Southington, Connecticut. Sam Leung in Toronto, uh, Sir Sam, that is, Sir Sam Leung. 
I don't know what that nah, means. I don't do it. They can't always be doing the eights. Uh, Sean Coffey in Annandale, New South Wales, 8080. There he is. Uh, sorry. But I, was day, the, I was daydreaming. Pay no attention. It's for the nights. No, I, I was daydreaming. Uh, sorry. And Sleep. he says, uh, Sam, make a comment. Whoa, dude, your dollar's gone way up, man. <laughs> yeah. Man. I know. The, the, we're 75 cents to our dollar now, the Australian dollar. We have the, uh, we're at 122 euro to dollar, which is like, it's getting there. It's yep. getting down yeah. to 120, which is yeah, And you nice. know why? It's because of these great gas prices. We're, that we're, helps. We're killing it here. It's great. Ben Smith in Greenville, Texas, 75. Dude, also Dan, wishes, Dan. wishes everyone a Merry Christmas. Gregory da- uh, Davies in Lawton, Oklahoma, 6969. He says, you saved me from insanity. I think we've saned, if, say, saned. We've saned a lot. <laughs> we are saning you. We're saning you from insanity. David, oh, and would we create the, you know... You be a little better, uh, the right perspective. You go listen to the real news, you crack up. It's a healthy news diet. Yes, you crack Actually, up too. You crack up. You it's crack hilarious. Up. You can't help it, especially this North Korea stuff. Oh yeah, this is some of the funniest material ever. Scott Olson, San Diego, California. Well, this is David C. Pugh in Massillon, Ohio, sixty nine, sixty nine. Uh, Scott Olson, San Diego, California, sixty eight, thirty three. Sir Jeff Yerke over here. Uh, we've got a record project. I got to get back on the stick with that. Uh, is that your, um, your Red Fox project? Yes, yes, the Red Fox project. <laughs> you know how long I've heard 66. about this? It's like five years you've been working on that project. Yeah, we've got a lot yeah. of the stuff done. Oh yeah, and what's that, what are you going to release it on? We don't know. Oh, okay, Rob, we do. It's like an exercise with. No, it's like we're. <laughs> it's like right. a dot com idea. Oh yeah, just do it. Yeah. Uh, Robert Lane in Rialto, California, $65. Paul Love in Mechanicsville, Virginia, $60.60. David Oliver in San Francisco, California, $60. Jefferson C. Post in uh, East of, uh, Massachusetts, that's double nickels on the dime. Marion, or yeah, Marion Al- Avila, fifty-five ten from the Philippines. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, we have too many of those. George Oberhofer, Jackson, New Jersey. Fifty thirty three. Gary Wiley in Squim, Washington. Fifty. Is that and, how you pronounce that? Because yeah, oh. yeah. Because it says S E Q U I M. Squim. Yeah, Squim. Squim. All right. Named after an Indian tribe. And uh, new, newbies that show up in the area always got Sequim. Oh, but, uh, eh, wrong. Fail. Yeah. Then they beat him up and kill him. Right. <laughs> throw him in a ditch. So you better make sure you get that right. Squim. Andy Clements in uh, Maynooth, Maynooth uh, County, Kildare. Ireland. 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 We've got a lot 50. of Ireland's. Nice. Uh, and curiously, Eric Veet in Dublin, California. Oh, Dublin, California. <laughs> that, now that's your, your crazy number theory right there. Yeah, it's a little... Uh, we little got an actual piece. person from Ireland, and then underneath that, someone from Dublin, California. <laughs> yeah, no, it makes no Love sense. Love it. Uh, David Smulski in Austintown, Ohio, 50. These are all 50s. Sir Brian Watson in Raleigh, North Carolina. Damian Curry, your buddy, in McLeod, uh, Victoria. Martin Van Gelen Lost. Oh, come on. Martijn van Galen Martijn. Lost. Martijn van Galen Lost. Martijn van Galen Lost. Beneden Leeuwen. In Beneden Leeuwen. <laughs> 50. Sean, <laughs> was it that bad? You're not even trying. You're just mocking. You're just mocking. <laughs> <laughs> just mocking. A, I'm not mocking. No, 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 no. You're getting it all wrong. Uh-huh. Now I'm lost. Well, just go uh, back to Benet Lune. Uh, John DeSantis, DeSantis in Fort Pierce, Florida. These are all 50s. Justin Bloom in Madison, Alabama. Danielle Sweezy in, or Swayze possibly in Gresham, Oregon. Sir David Trotsky in Romeoville, Illinois comes in commonly. Uh, and we thank him. Benjamin Smith in Oakland over here by me and Sir Mark Tanner in Whittier, California. We want to thank all these folks for helping us with the show 680. And remember, we have 681, the special Christmas show coming up on Thursday. Dvorak.org slash NA. That's right, everybody. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, especially everyone who came in under the $50 level for anonymity purposes or you're one of the subscriptions. It really, really is highly appreciated. I think you really enjoy the value you get from this content so much more when it's the actual product we put together for you and it is a product we don't this is not something we don't just jump out of bed on uh, thursdays and sundays and go oh yeah i'm gonna do a show 
Hey, let's do a show. No. We are uh, creating a product, not using the public as a product. Exactly. Creating some phony thing that looks like a product. Exactly. Which is what you're dealing with when you're watching anything commercial. Anything. Well, pretty much anything. Anything, yeah. including NPR and PBS, public radio, public television, is not commercial free. There yeah, you're are, never going to see. Uh, you're never going to see. Uh, Bill Burlington Gates sucks Northern shit. No, you're going to see that. <laughs> you, Burlington Northern could have a, a complete sex scandal. Yeah, and they would never be discussed probably on not. on the news hour. Probably not. Exactly. Yeah, I, no, I do have a note from a thirty. I just to throw in something from someone that, that stone, that's a thirty-three dollar a month subscriber that's been that way for a while. Sure. Said a note, and he wants to highlight Fabian Scherschel from Hanover. He and his fellow podcast producer Dan Lynch have been producing one of the most popular Linux podcasts, Linux Outlaws. Yes. And sadly, they've announced the end of the Linux oh. Outlaws after three hundred seventy episodes. We could have probably plugged them earlier. Oh, I shoot. wanted to see that they were recognized. Fab frequently talks about no agenda on his yes. podcast. Why? And without it, I probably would have never found the show. Why do you think they stopped? What is it? What happened? We don't know. So if you could find a bit of Christmas spirit to give Fab and Dan yeah. uh, a shout out to let them know, firstly, that people thanks care. for hitting me in the mouth. And secondly, thanks for the second best podcast in the universe. They'll be missed. Tom Green. This is this is a problem. And, and this is also an opportunity, John. Uh, a a, a a gap in the market. <laughs> we can do a Linux podcast. Dvorak.org slash N-A. If you wake up with the blues, trying to fill your day with news, there's one thing you must remember. No agenda in the morning. For a healthy, balanced news diet, try noagendashow.com. Jobs, 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 and jobs. Let's vote for jobs. You thought. I'm not. Well, we can make it really short uh, for today's birthday segment. Only one Sir Ted Hossman celebrates tomorrow. And we say happy birthday to our night of the No Agenda Roundtable from all your friends here at the best podcast in the universe. It's your birthday, yeah. And we also have one night. This is uh, Nicholas McFall, who uh, I think he's this is he's been saving for a while, no? I believe, I believe so. I believe so. Let me see. I want to just uh, wait a minute. Let's reread his note here. Yes, listened for several years, but only started, oh, started donating this year. The analysis presented on the show is outstanding. Couldn't think of a better show to support. I would encourage every listener to make a donation, even a small one, as the first is the hardest. Do you think that's true? It's the, it's the hardest, the first A lot of people are, don't have, they, they can't bring themselves, a lot of our listeners mm-hmm. can't bring themselves to donating anything because they think everything should be free. Yeah. And meanwhile, of course, they're watching commercial television. And even if they're skipping it with their DVR, they're catching a lot of this stuff. Oh, yeah. And that is, is, is the same as paying. You might as well be sending right. these douchebags money. Yeah. Uh, Except they're they're deriving so much more value from you. Yeah, because really. the, the, the yeah, product the you get from these commercial operations is not is outstanding. Not it's, it's not dishonest. outstanding. Honest, it's dishonest <laughs> material. We're honest. Yeah, we're pretty damn honest. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. There's your sword. All right. Nick Nicholas McFall, step forward, my friend. You are now. Becoming a Knight of the No Agenda Roundtable, I proudly crown the Sir Nick of the South Side. For you, my friend, hookers and blow, rent boys and chardonnay, malted barley and hops, Dos Equis and Dutch dominatrix, ass cream with bear fillings, porn stars and pot, Cuban cigars and single malt scotch, cabinet, uh, cannabis and cabernet, opium and warm orange juice. How about some wenches and beer, some vodka and vanilla, bong hits and bourbon, or how about just some mutton and meat? It always seems to be a favorite of all of our nights. Thank you very much for uh, your contributions over the past year. And I'm glad you've been listening and go to noagendanation.com slash rings, pick up your well-deserved ring. Everyone yeah, should do that. That should be coming in shortly and tweet the picture. Once you get it in with your tweet certificate the picture and we'll retweet. Yes. Uh, uncle Don. So I've been going back and forth with uncle Don on this uh, North Korea thing, as you know, and I told him, I said, you watch they're going to come out and they're going to confirm it's North Korea. And, of course, he has not gotten back to me. Um, I don't know exactly why, but um, I'm sure that there's all kinds of conversations uh, going on. Now, he is so bane from mainstream media because of his opinions as a serious guy, you know, 
50 years in the CIA, uh, uh, ambassador to South Korea, now working for uh, um, the Pacific Century Institute, I think it is. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, some money guys. Uh, he actually, you know, that he when he left... The Goldman Sachs gave him a contract. Did we talk about this? No, I don't remember this. Yeah. And, and he, he said he hated it so much. He was so disgusted by what the things they wanted him to do. Uh, he quit and he gave all his shares back. Because <laughs> they'd given him he shares. kept the shares like he should. Yeah, I, I also kind of said, you yeah, know, dude. No. Yeah, don't do that. He does not like those guys. So when you don't like those guys, you, you're you pretty... don't like him, you keep the shares. <laughs> well... No, it's a, it's a, he's a man of principle. He's 87. Well, he doesn't need the money. So he did get asked onto a roundtable in New York, a roundtable discussion on, I'd never even heard of this outfit, RNN, the regional news network. This, wow. Yeah, this is getting, this is getting it sounds kind of, Russian. <laughs> no, it's actually, if you look at, uh, let me see, I have it here somewhere. RNN is... It's a little outfit that owns, I don't know, eight local stations around the New York, the upstate New York, the New York upstate area. I mean, it's it's really it's it's I think it's unworthy. But uh, well, they have a nice building. Oh, a beautiful building, half in the water there and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here, so they had Don on for about twenty minutes uh, talking about uh, the the rectal feeding torture report. And uh, I thought I thought his part of what he said was funny and, and clip worthy here on the best podcast in the universe. When you go through the report, we outsourced to two shrinks who never done an interrogation. Forget they don't speak Farsi. They don't know anything about Al Qaeda. And by the way, Don has this great way of smiling at someone when they say these horrible <laughs> things. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed this. It's, it's something he does when. He'll be really smiling like he's ready to burst out laughing while you're... It's a, it's a trick. He's doing something very specific. You have to watch this. And he'll just be smiling from ear to ear while you're saying these horrible things about torture. And I don't know why, but it's something... There's, there's got to be some tactic in here that we don't know about. And we're paying him $81 million right. of taxpayer money with a contract for part of my two yahoos who don't even know the first thing about it. And we're letting them figure out where the line is? I mean, you spent a lot of years in government service, a lot of years at the CIA. How do we get to the point where we're outsourcing to people who I don't think have the authority to make these decisions, and then we have to defend it? Well, we're, we get into that business when we're asked to do things, which is basically not what we signed up to do. Uh, we did not sign up to be jail keepers and interrogators. Uh, we were asked by JFK to murder Castro, and we weren't very good at assassinating. <laughs> I was uh, involved in the uh, in the hearings in 1975, Church Committee, and you know we made eight attempts to get Castro and failed in all of them. So we're not very good assassins, or we weren't, and we're lousy torturers. And I'm glad to say that's true in both cases. And it, it's just, I used to think that the best thing I had going for me as a CIA officer was the fact that I was an American. And the fact that we did not torture our people. Everybody knew the Soviets did. And there was a huge difference. I now have a very close friend who's dual citizenship. She's an Arabic specialist. And when she goes to, into, into the Middle East, the closest guarded secret she has is that she's American. And she goes by her French citizenship. And we've done that to ourselves. And uh, I think we need to stop it. I hope that this will become an issue in the, in the election. I think yeah. Obama knows that we need an effective CIA. So he's not throwing the whole agency under the bu bus. There's the bus. He trusts Brennan. And I thought Brennan tried to do a good job the other day. And when he said, it is unknowable whether or not these EITs really yeah. led us to capture Osama bin Laden. And I think, I think that's a pretty honorable statement. Oh, uh, he's uh, still a company man. Our Don. Yeah, yeah, well, of course. And I like the well, fact that he says, you know, we, when it comes to killing people and torture, we just suck. <laughs> We're no good at assassinations. We're pretty good with the drones. Well, he didn't say that we weren't any good with that. And by the way, I don't think we are. We for how many how many real terrorists who are really coming over here to really attack us are we taking out uh, compared to the number of citizens? I'm sorry, possible militants. <laughs> 
Come on. None. Yeah. We're horrible. But isn't that the idea? Yeah. It's just to blow people up just because we like blowing stuff up? Uh, it's horrible. It's not, it's not really not even funny, really. It's, it's pathetic. All right. Well, that was interesting. Well, uh, it's interesting that you got the clip at all. Yeah. How'd you, how did you get that clip? Uh, it showed up in my news feed. He didn't tell me about it. And all of a sudden, the video showed up. I, you know, I, I search for stuff all the time. I'm sure he didn't have any. You just happened to have a news feed that's got some keywords. Yeah, no, I search all kinds of stuff. I did find someone sent me this article. You know, talking about these. Um, when you think of these, of the torture, the rectal feeding, and and all, and all this business, and the rendition flights. You know, you Do put, you like hummus? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jake, I'm not a doctor and neither are you. Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a diplomat. And uh, if you think about, you know, who's being renditioned away to, to go into these secret, you know, camps and, and basements and be tortured, you don't really think immediately about just some guy from Canada who, who uh, uh, was on his way home from a family trip abroad, stops at JFK. I'd never heard this story before. Oh. And uh, had you heard about this? No, no. I, I think I have, but play. Okay. No, I, I, no, I don't have a clip. It's, uh, it's, uh, this guy's name is, uh, well, he had, well, he has a very unfortunate name, Maher Arar. He's full of, full, just Canadian. And he lands in JFK and, the, he is literally seized by the CIA, thrown onto a, a, a jet. Uh, rendered out through Bangor, Maine, and was gone for ten months. Being he's tortured. One of the, guys the Canadian government was bitching about. Yeah, and it was tortured. He said one tactic they used to question prisoners for two hours, then put them in a waiting room so they can hear others screaming, then bring them back to continue interrogation. Uh, electrical cable two inches thick hit me with it everywhere in my body. Uh, mostly aimed for my palms. Sometimes the miss hit my wrists. Struck me on my hips, lower back. Constantly threatening me with with metal chair, tire, electric That's shocks. That's enhanced interrogation. You know, we can debate what the meaning of torture is. <laughs> oh, man. But you never think it's just some Canadian dude. Like, yes, wait a minute. Canada. Hey, stay home next year. <laughs> just some Canadian dude. It's horrible. Yeah. This is horrible. That's okay. They're all in on it. Everybody thinks it's great. I guess. All right, I, I, Here's a, I got an interesting little side thing here. Right. Did you, you play the Snowden in Germany? I didn't know any of this was going on. Now, when Edward Snowden revealed what America was up to, spying on civilians around the world, it came at a cost to his safety and also his own citizenship. But with it has come incredible uh, popularity with posters, music and even art devoted to him. Some even describe him as a new pop icon of our times. Igor Piskunov travelled to Germany where the persecuted whistleblower has obtained quite a fan base. Edward Snowden is keen that everyone knows becoming a celebrity was the last thing he was aiming for. But whether he likes it or not, he's now famous. And in Germany, has a lot of fans. One artist symbolically renamed a street in Berlin in dedication to the whistleblower. In another event, inspired by his revelations, an NSA in the house message was projected onto the side of the U.S. Embassy. He is a hero, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know this. I know this is, I know this is happening. I didn't know this was going on, and I want to put a, a commentary for there. We have a lot of uh, Deutschland listeners, mm -hmm. and I would like to get one of these posters. They, there's two kinds. There's, there's the bigger one, and there's a the small one they stick on the on poles. I wouldn't mind having either one. The, the, the small one looks like a sticker. I think the big one's actually a real poster. I, I want to get one. This is, I think it's a collectible. I agree. This is really big. This is Berlin, mainly. Berlin has become the center of freedom fighters. Of course, completely misguided about Berlin being the place you want to be. In fact, it's the place where the NSA really wants you to be. Yeah. That's, that's our main... It's a honeypot city. It's a main hub of, <laughs> of activity. It's exactly where you want it to be. Yeah, Berlin's guy has always had this magical uh, aspect. A lot of cities do. Paris, uh, 
Madrid to some extent. But but Berlin's always, even though when it was, you know, all busted up by the powers that beat Germany in World War II, it revitalized itself. And if you go there, it's a very lively, comfortable I, place. I, I think I want to go. I want to go check it out a bit. I want to see. You haven't been there? there? Well, I've, of course, I've been to Berlin, but I haven't been since the Snowden revelations. Oh, no. since Snowden. Oh, yeah, you should go. I'd love to go and see what's going on. Yeah, do a podcast from there. Well, a couple, maybe. Uh, there's a lot of people. Well, of course, this is also where uh, Poitras and... Or I heard someone say Poitras. Poitras. I swear to God. So, Poit, Laura Poitras. Maybe That's we're not the, saying it right. I don't know. No, but they, when she's sitting there in front of Amy Goodman, yeah. and Amy Goodman says Laura Poitras... It's not Poitras. Poitras sits there and doesn't say... No, no, no. It's, it's pronounced Poitras. Poitras. Or she didn't say anything in the pre-meeting, the pre-interview. <laughs> yeah. It seems that that's her name, Poitras. I, I want to keep it Poitras. It's like okay. Tim Collins. You po- call her Poitras. 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 Um, the, uh, the, the apple baum is there. Applesauce. The tour man. Um, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Snowden's former girlfriend. The uh, the, the cute one uh, the, the, who was Assange's former girlfriend. Oh, the, not the stripper. No, not the stripper. The stripper is supposed to be in Moscow with him now. Whatever. Um, yeah, I think I've heard that too. He's also I, I, missing some teeth on the right. I still, the last video he did, which was... He's missing teeth now? On the right-hand side. Yeah, it's always a, a, a Google Hangout. The right hand side of his face. Yeah. That so the left here, hand that would be a left hook. The left or a the, black. If it's on the right hand side of his face, that would be a, a left hook, probably delivered by some bruiser. Well, I've never really paid attention, or I've never seen it. I, most of the time, I guess we've always seen his face mainly left profile, which is why I've always yeah. seen the broken uh, nose guard on the glasses. When That's he wears the them, glass guy, yeah, well, 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 he only wears the glasses um, when he's being yeah, prop. When he's being Snowden, when he's being the guy, yeah, the Snowden, the brand. Yeah, you never see when he's out on the street in Moscow. He's he's not brand Snowden. I wonder if he's learned Russian by now. It seems that he should have. I don't know if he's it's easy. Pretty it, fluent in the language when you're there that long. It may not be that easy to learn. Now, anyone can learn any language if you're stuck there. Oh, um, let's see, I've. I have some things from Bamford about Germany. I don't want to play that. I don't think that's interesting, really. I think the more, most interesting, I think one of the more interesting things is here's the cop killer rundown. Play that. Yeah, this is New York. Now, two New York police officers have been shot dead in their patrol car in what appears to be vengeful executions. The officers were ambushed and shot at point-blank range. The gunman later committed suicide by turning the weapon on himself. Mm -hmm. He made threats on social media to kill police officers just hours before the shooting in response to the deaths of Michael Brown and Eric Garner. I don't think I can recall a time... When some guy who, who was committed acts of violence, including death, but has not killed himself. Well, they always wind up killing themselves. I find that unusual. It, it, never are the guys taken alive. This, they're always killing himself. Always. Well, you know, you're in a, you're yeah, in a cabin. Well, you, you've been running from the cops for, uh, you get for burned, months. Yeah, you get yeah. burned to death. Oh, but he killed himself in the flames. Yeah, so you, you can never talk to the guy. Yeah. Whatever the case is, if this is true, we, we assume that at least the dead policemen are true, Yeah, as the story goes. Yeah, yeah it's Sharpton. He should be arrested. But funny you say but that. No, no, he's actually working in the White House. Yeah, funny you say that. Um, so we have a huge fracas going on now between the, uh, the PBA, which is, you know, the, the pretty much the... Professional Bowlers Association. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Policemen's Benevolent Association. Oh, right. Um, and the, the mayor of New York, Bill de Blasio, and uh, literally saying de Blasio and Sharpton have blood on their hands. Blood on their hands, they're saying. And, 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 I, I'm in on I'm that. I'm in on I it, agree. too. And the, and the police, uh, the mayor came out and did a, some speech. The police turned their backs on him. This is not a good thing. This is, this is not how the mayor and the police usually interact. Um, and, and this is, this is problematic. And you, know, you want, you want some problems with policemen, the New York cops, Chicago New would be York, some too. Oh my God. You do not, this is not, uh, this, this is not the, the guys you want to have against you. No, this is not the guys you want who are saying, Hey, you know what? Why don't we just do everything by the book? Uh, no, definitely not. You don't want that. Your, your city's going to fall apart pretty quickly. 
And, and I agree that, that Sharpton, of all people, Sharpton being an advisor now to the White House consistently is troublesome, man. I mean, this guy, I was in New York in the in the 80s, and we had the Tawana Brawley case, and the, the, it, Sharpton was just such an, so annoying. And of course, that, that turned out to be not true. And, you know, people just don't, the, people are stupid. They don't learn from history. This guy is a charlatan. And there's, there's, luckily, there's a lot of families who are saying, hey, yeah, man, you don't speak for us, go away. Some of them are doing that finally, but, you know, that doesn't really, that gets a little bit of reporting, not much. Well, um, like I said, the Obama administration is uh, fairly stupid uh, and su- su- subject to bullshit artists. Yeah. And I would go back to uh, the CTO, CEO, whatever that guy's title was, uh, Kundra, who uh, said <laughs> skip, that skip logic skip was some logic. sort of thing, and people were out there speaking COBOL and whatever. <laughs> He's just he sound like a moron. He doesn't know anything. But, oh, no. Yeah. Skip logic. Skip logic, everybody. <laughs> Hey, Jay Johnson's the last thing I got for us. Jay Johnson is our uh, replacement for uh, Lucy Napolitano. Uh, is J- it? No, J- it's J-, J. It's J. John- J. Johnson. No, it is J. It's not J. It's J. But you pronounce it J. No, it's you like pronounce dash. it J. It's like Daesh, like Dash. J. 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 Johnson. J. J. Mr. J. Mr. Secretary Johnson. There you go. Now, we've got a lot of, uh, um, uh, how do you say it correctly, undocumented citizens yeah, here in Texas. I, I, I know, I'm sure several. Yeah, uh, I think we have a few in California. Yeah, everywhere. And uh, now I, I, have a personal, I have personal feelings about uh, what's going on, how this works. And but what is unacceptable to me is the general statement, our immigration system is broken. You know, it's like. Fuck you. But that's not, don't say that. It's not broken. It's become bureaucratic. It's become unaffordable. And it's become. It's become not, it it's hasn't like, been enforced. It's, well, there are uh, laws on the books that are not enforcing. That, but I'll leave that for what it is. Um, that it should be, it should not cost $7,000 per person just to become legal in America. It just shouldn't. It's just, it makes no sense. It's never been that way. And it's all since this went from the State Department to the Department of Homeland Security. These, this is a morass of bull crap. It needs to stop. That whole department needs to go away. It's crazy. And then you get, so now the idea is, uh, if you, because there, the people are so confused, there was no executive order. The only thing that is being applied is discretion uh, which any agency can apply discretion on who they are going to um, uh, go after and deport, and it's felons, not families. If you remember, this is the little the little mantra that they put in: felons, not families. Um, but the Mexican population, who I that I know and who I believe are probably uh, undocumented here, they are afraid of this guy saying this. From my homeland security perspective, we want to encourage people who are in fact not removal priorities and have not been for years. These are people who are just simply not going to be deported because they've been here for years, we don't have the resources, and they become integrated members of society. And if they're not removal priorities, i.e. they're not criminals, I want them, I want to know who they are. I want them to come out of the shadows. And so we're offering people, consistent with our legal authority, the opportunity to come out of the shadows, submit to a background check, and be held accountable. Oh, yeah. Right away, sir. <laughs> now, any, any illegal immigrant that happens to be here for years knows the ropes, yeah, and but... that ain't the ropes. <laughs> nobody, nobody is going to go, oh, yeah, no, this is a great idea. Oh, but finally, oh, yes. finally, they're asking me to come out of the shadows <laughs> and put my name on the list. <laughs> No, 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 no. No, this is not going to happen. Oh, I mean, Hit- I mean, Hitler's Germany. I can, I can now change my name back to Rabinowitz. You're, you're, you're not a uh, what are they priority? Uh huh. People are so <laughs> afraid now because they're, they're, just, they're just they're now they're really quivering. No one even trusts. No one trusts any any of this. That I of course I know. not. You're not stupid. Ugh. 
Yeah, but it's people are going back to Mexico. They're just leaving. Screw this place. Well, it's, um, yeah. Probably, probably the right attitude. If the Mexican uh, economy ever picked up, there would probably be a lot more going back, but it's been ruined. Indeedy. All right, everybody. Well, have yourselves a uh, Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, a uh, uh, Super Solstice, a uh, Kick and Kwanzaa. And what else do we have? Uh, Festivus. Fine Festivus. That's right. You staying in uh, California? Going uh, to? No, no. I'm going up north. Washington, as you would say, Washington. 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 All right, everybody. So we have our Christmas special. I hope you like it. It's, it was kind of us deconstructing us. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know. It's good. I think it is good. It's actually one of the best shows we've ever done. And you'll be hearing it in real time if you want, but also on the podcast. We'll release it simultaneously on Christmas Day. Right, and we'll be back Sunday after after Christmas. Yes, we will. And then again, we'll be working on New Year's. That's right. Uh, also, that's right. Another, Bringing could do another, you know, no, another. No, 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 no. We're going to try and do another outstanding product for you. And I'll be coming to you then from FEMA Region Six, where I am today in the morning. Everybody, my name's Adam Curry, and from Northern Silicon Valley, where we have ant problems <laughs> and the yes no problem. I'm John C. Dvorak. We will talk again. Uh, well, technically on uh, Thursday, right here on No Agenda. Selfie. You will not receive a selfie so long as you stand before me with your ridiculous fur hoodie. When will you learn that your status updates mean zero to nothing to anyone ever? It doesn't matter which social network you post it on. Worthless. Use your mind. Create new memories. Interact. Don't just add it to a library of forgotten photographs. Okay. Ugh, how disappointing your generation is. Marika. Ow! ISIS. We will follow them to the gates of hell. ISIS. I feel good! Jake, I'm not a doctor and neither are you. Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a diplomat. I'm Joe Biden, and thank you for taking the time to listen. Adios, mofo. The best podcast in the universe. Dvorak.org slash N-A.